Hey guys, my wife, Leanne Kreischer, is doing a live wife of the party at Zany's Comedy Club in Nashville. Nashville, you will not want to miss this. Special guest to be announced. You can get your tickets for April 14th, live wife of the party at nashcomedyfest.com. Go out and support my old lady. Oh my Doing the backflip, that would that would bring, you know, some of the some of the women in. Oh, oh yeah. My God. You know how many hand jobs I've gotten on the dance floor? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Dude. Top Soft World Tour, April 4th. I'm coming to Chicago, then Columbus, Knoxville, Harrisonburg, Virginia, Columbia, South Carolina, Birmingham, Alabama, Clarksville, Tennessee, Louisville, Kentucky. Top Soft World Tour. That Pat, uh, Cat Williams podcast, I, I watch it all the time. He's a lot of good so, stuff. There's so much he's to just, dissect. So, he's so mesmerizing. He's so mesmerizing. He's got a voice you could listen to, uh, mm-hmm. not just talk about uh, you know stuff that he was talking about, but he just feels very connected to everything he's saying. We were, and that's we were, interesting to listen to. We were in his hometown, Dayton, yeah. Ohio. Mm-hmm. We were in Dayton, Ohio, Cat Williams' hometown. Oh, pretty special. Yeah, it's but it's interesting to, to go to Dayton. You know, so you know the thing about Dayton, right, is they were really big uh, industrial town, and mm-hmm. it all fucking left. There was a documentary that was just made about Kia setting up a plant in Dayton, Ohio. Do you see that? Mm-mm. So D- Dayton, Ohio was like a big industrial town. It was a booming town in Ohio. I'm I'm paraphrasing what I know. I saw this on a documentary, and I watched a, uh that I watched. And and I had been to Dayton so many times. I remember leaving Dayton one time. A guy, cab driver, was like, how are ticket sales? And I was like, not good. And he goes, yeah, this town's dead. <laughs> we are, they all left. And so like Dayton was this like fucking thriving hub of Ohio because of the car industry. And I think they did windshields, if I'm not mistaken. Cool. And then... That, and then everything fucking left when it went to Asia. And then Kia brought it back and was like, yo, we're going to reinvigorate Dayton, Ohio. But the, you got to see this documentary. Yeah. Because the, the the Korean people that come over were like, yo, I make shit money. That's okay. I have a one-bedroom apartment. I eat Twinkies and smoke cigarettes. Yeah. And that's all they do. This one guy only ate Twinkies and smoked cigarettes. How do you look? He was, not great. <laughs> not great. Skinny, but not like he yeah. looked unhealthy. Yeah, yeah. But they left eyes. their families for fucking a year. They uh-huh. left their families and then they came over and they were lucky out of the job. And Americans were like, fuck this. Yeah. You want me to work 10 hours a day doing windshields? Mm-mm. No, fuck you. I'm that's what about my benefits? What about this? What about that? And it's a great documentary. Can someone Kyle, will you find the Kia documentary, Dayton, Ohio? There's there, an interesting there's, time. Oh, sorry. That's no. okay. There's so many little towns like that, like in the middle of the country and then up through Michigan and everything where the entire town absolutely is dependent on like one like General Motors uh, factory or whatever. In 2008, when the big three were all getting bailed out by the government, if you watch the government hearings on that, it was bonkers how not corrupt, but like biased a lot of them were where they're like, we shouldn't bail them out. And it's like some uh, congressman from Alabama and has a huge Volkswagen factory in their state and knows that they need to be loyal to Volkswagen instead of them. And I mean, it goes deep. Yeah. There's just an interesting thing to go a little, a little deeper. Have you seen that guy that Rogan interviewed named Daryl Davis? The guy that, that the black dude that's like cut the talk- head off and put it left in the refrigerator. No, no, not the guy, not the guy, not the guy, not the guy. I'd like to have him back on the podcast. I'd love to hear what he has to say now. Yeah, not that guy, not that guy. But this is the guy that got like, he interviews like KKK members. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, he was, he he talks about like, you know, when you're talking about the General Motors and all that stuff, like that's how they were able to recruit a lot of white dudes for the KKK because, you know, all these uh, immigrants were coming in and doing those jobs for cheaper. And so they were like, yeah, they're taking your jobs, they're doing this. And so that's how they got recruited. So, like, this was, like, early on, though. So, it's, like, uh, it, anytime I hear that kind of stuff and talking about, like, the like the general voters. I can't just think of a joke. I, I'm so what? sorry. But, like, do you think the original KKK members, if they saw black people today, they'd be like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> if you just put them in a yeah, movie yeah. theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold the fuck. This is what we were talking about. This is what you should have let us follow through. Oh, my God. I what can't was, help it. I have like I I can't especially if I'm around a black dude yeah. and I feel like comfortable with. Yeah. I just I like I there are things that you just can't help, but like because like you I we were talking about Martin Luther King Jr. I, I oh yeah, sa- you broke I'm it obs- down. Your, I'm your knowledge with for Martin Luther King Jr. like is, yeah, is is insane. I had no idea that I have a dream was an ad lib. Yeah. 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 I learned that this weekend. Yep. Yeah, thank I mean, you, Bert. Shout, shout out to Aaliyah. <laughs> that was that was 
Yeah. It's not Aaliyah. It's not Aaliyah. Aaliyah the singer? Malia. Malia. Yeah, Malia. 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 Aaliyah the singer broke that story. Yeah. Yeah. For those listening, you retell the story. I like to hear how you tell it because it's because ultimately that's how knowledge gets transferred. Is I did I I did the thing and then I tell you the story. I'd love to hear you tell it at a bar. Uh, so, all right, so I'll pretend I'm at a bar, okay. uh, St. Patty's Day bar, which by the way, happy St. Patty's okay, Day. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Okay, we're getting into the improv, all right? Hey, hey, happy St. Patty's Day mm. to the great leader, St. Patrick. Say, shout great out Christian, Christian. Christian, great Christian. Great Christian. Oh, the great Christians. Name a great Christian, Adam. Uh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, oh St. Wow. Patty's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, actually, the original, uh, the original uh, fucking dude. I actually just read a story about MLK. Uh, I have a dream. So we all remember, first of all, give it up if you have a dream. Give it up if you have a dream, dude. Because uh, St. Patty's Day is all about, uh, St. Patty's Day is all about figuring out and living in front. Martin Luther King, uh, I have a dream speech. Wasn't even his idea, dude. <laughs> he, some woman, uh, uh Another shot. Some uh, woman was off the side, Aaliyah, the singer, and she was like, uh, hey, talk about your uh, nightmares. Boy. And he was like, I've been, been watching, watching you, you like a hawk in the sky. sky. And you on my plane. <laughs> <you> go. <laughs> so Aaliyah gave, told him that. So Aaliyah, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, you can Google it, but it's some common knowledge. And uh, so he was like, struggling you know like uh, kind of like i am with this story and he was like getting to the end of his speech and being like i need a big banger a big closer and she was like talk about your fucking dreams dude and he fucking did and uh and he told his uh and he was like i'll tell you about what's cool is having dreams and thinking big well you remember what the speech was and he said he would, and i have a dream and everyone went fucking bananas dude so it was actually a good impression of Bert telling us that the other day. <laughs> oh, was that Bert? Yeah. Oh, that was me being a guy at a bar. Yeah, that was a good impression Retail of Bert telling us that oh, the other okay, day. Yeah. That's how many of those little anecdote stories do you absorb when you hear that? Like, does your brain decide hey, what to hold on to? Dive. Oh, I get, I just find the ones that I find interesting. Is That's that so like funny? You... David Lucas. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Wow, we were just talking about a black guy and a black yeah. guy texted Whoa. Why do you think Martin Luther King made this happen? <laughs> <laughs> Look at your hair down. Holy shit. What's up, David? What's up? <laughs> He's one of, the, one of the monkeys from the Wizard of Oz. Man, fuck uh, you. <laughs> wait, flip it around. <laughs> what's up, David? Hey, good to see hey, What's up, man? Good what's to up? see you. Barbecue Dave in the building. Adam Bray. Let's go. We're doing hey. a podcast. What's up? Oh, man, I ain't know you was podcast. I'm about to say, man, June 12th, another fish fry, baby. All right, done deal. Oh, uh, hello. Making Georgia, yeah. All right, yeah. I'll set it up. All right. All right, I'll the, the way he said your name, it sounds like a barbecue restaurant. Adam Ray. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were we, no, no, I, I take the things I find interesting. That, like, certain subjects, mm -hmm. so I, I think this is how memories work, is, like, certain subjects are fascinating to me. And so, like, I'll, I'll land on them. And then those are the ones I retain and I bring back. Mm. Like I love, uh, I love ships. I love, I love willpower. I love freedom. I love. I'm obsessed with the when in in history throughout history when people's freedoms are taken from them. Mm -hmm. That fascinates me because we're so far removed from that. So like perfect example, St. Patrick on St. Patty's Day, yeah. at the age of twelve, was kidnapped by, uh, by I think Romans. They came into his village. This is the beginning of the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages is about to show up. But right now, like the, the Roman Empire uh, had all of, uh, it was falling. And, but they had Britain. They had Britain and Ireland. Ireland was all savages, like real savages. Britain was a little high end. And these dudes knew that the rules were, if you got slaves, you could just, if you could capture someone, they were your slave, and then you could sell them into a different island. St. Patrick was from a wealthy family in, in Britain. And they came in on boats. They grabbed him and a bunch of his slaves, because he had slaves. And they enslaved all of them, took them over to Ireland. And for seven years, St. Patrick was a shepherd. He didn't think his life would ever amount to anything. He had to come realize that that was his life. And so he found God. He got really religious, really religious. He would fast to get closer to God. Denying himself pleasure was how he got to God. And one night, and I believe I could be like this, one night, <laughs> not to bring it around, full circle, St. Patrick had a dream. 
he had a dream that there was a boat waiting for him to take him off of this island. And he kept having this dream. Now, if you were a slave and you were running away at the time and you had the thick accent, you didn't speak the language, they knew you were a slave. They knew you were. But he went, he walked from the top of Ireland to the bottom of Ireland, got on a boat, offered his services, and they took the first, you want to know something crazy? This is something that sticks in my brain. No, I'm all right. So they say to St. Patrick, uh, we'll let you on this boat, but first you got to suck all our nipples. What? What? It's a common practice that sailors did back then. St. Patrick's gay? No. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think I said? <laughs> St. Patrick, they wanted him to suck all their nipples. That's how the sa sailors like, look, we're going to be in tough weather. We need to know that we trust each other. You got to suck everyone's nipples. They hadn't invented handshakes yet. <laughs> and St. Patrick said, I can't do that. It's against my religion. You guys are all heathens. And I can't do that. I'm, I believe in Christ and I can't. And so they still let him on the boat. They were a little trepidatious. He went back to Britain and went back to his family. And, but he was too religious for his family. So he was like, they were like, Jesus Christ, this guy's gone off the fucking deep end. And he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over and I'm going to set up as a deacon over in Ireland. I'm going to, I'm going to bring Christianity to Ireland. So he brought Christianity to Ireland. And it's an interesting story all within that. What's fascinating is that St. Patrick dies just average saint, average saint. No one, not even a saint, just a fucking deacon dies. And it wasn't until like, almost like, like our current times that, that Irish people were like, yo, he was a bad mother. Like 400 years later, they're like, we should turn him into a saint. Say that he took all the snakes off Ireland. Mm. When they say he took all the snakes off Ireland, it's not real snakes. There was never a snake on Ireland. He was saying he got rid of all the bad people in Ireland. Mm, all the okay. people that were enslaving people St. Patrick cleaned up Ireland and it was Chicago, Boston and New York that start, started the immigrants started celebrating their their heritage and they they can they canonized St. Patrick and they're like he's our guy. And so then St. Patrick was just a way for Irish people to have a day. St. Patrick's Day has been around forever. March 17th has been around forever, but it's now turned into this theme of everyone's Irish on St. Patrick's Day. We drink beer, we celebrate, we revelry, we dance, we sing, we drink. And so like, but like the little things I get a tethered to in a history story, like, like Hitler's a bad one to do, but like, I'm so, there's so many as things. As far as impressions go or what? No. Oh. <laughs> of like what fascinates me about his life. Right. Because <clears throat> you try, I, you always try to like see your parallels in life. And what's, I, what it kills me about Hitler is like, you know, those guys that stormed the Capitol, Hitler did that. Uh, Stalin, uh, Lenin did that. Uh, the fucking uh, Robespierre did that. Napoleon was a part of that. Like mm -hmm. all these great, great, great leaders, all did what these guys that stormed the Capitol did. They they did, and they and by the way, when they accomplished, when they stormed uh, St. Peter's uh, Castle in um, in uh, in in 1917, they did the same thing. The fucking Capitol stormers did. They started going through papers looking for proof. And there's no fucking proof. Mm, he's a fuck. He's a czar. He doesn't. He doesn't write shit down. He's just like everyone gets one beer, and then you know that's what what his downfall was. He promised everyone a beer. Hitler? No, no. Uh, oh. Saint Peter. Oh. Saint Peter. <laughs> Sorry, a lot of leaders. No, but 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 he promised everyone a beer. Hitler was at the beer hall putsch. At a beer hall. It's when they fucking... I mean, dude, I, I get obsessed with, like, little things, yeah, and then you, I get... you learn some different shit. Can I ask you this? Yeah. When did we introduce leprechauns into the mix? Yeah, like, what did that have like, to do with Like, why does Brad Williams have to fear this holiday so much? Maybe oh, we should yeah. call him. But <laughs> this is a, you know, this is a... I'm, when did that, you know, mascot become a part of this day? I don't know. I yeah. think leprechauns yeah. probably always a part of Ireland, but I don't know. It's just part of the corporate bastardization of... Is that what it is? Something. Yeah, I guess, right? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's just... Uh, they're like uh, uh, Americans going, oh, Ireland, uh, uh, leprechauns, that'll look cool and get people to buy beer. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Little people are good spokesmen. You know, once, once I'm finished learning about American slavery, I'll get to that point. Well, you, yeah. you want to know my joke about American slavery? <laughs> and this is based off all this... Because slavery has been around forever. And I was talking to someone about that. And they were like... It was at my friend's house. I was talking about uh enslavement it's been around for generations and they said that you know it's crazy black friend S no no uh asian friend oh and he was like he was like yeah slavery has been around forever they enslaved a chinese they've everyone and i said yeah but i mean we were doing it way late 
like we were like a we were like a woman breastfeeding a nine year old. Like that's what our slavery was like. Every, everyone was like, "Yo, we quit doing that a long time <laughs> yeah, ago." Yeah, yeah. And America's like, "What? Everyone did it." Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah, like, yeah. yeah, but you're doing it way too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and so the that was about the for only, a long time. Because I'm always trying to write a joke about it. Like I have no jokes about history. But like I always look at it as a comic. What are some of the good history podcasts that you like? Oh, the Noiser is the best history podcast in the world. And I would say subscribe to it. The ads really take you out of it. I really have a thing about ads right now because like an ad can pull you out of a podcast. I apologize. It's how it, it can, but it can also pull you Porosos. in. And Factor is yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Porosos, yeah, yeah. 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 Have you have you? Are there going to be TV ads for Porosos? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You ever you ever dig into like stoicism? That's like the thing I, I dig into the most. I can't. Really? Yeah, I can't. Really? I can't. Why? Because that that's that's part of history too. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's, it's good- like Marcus Aurelius is like the number one stoic, and so technically, like I listen There's to a the, lot more. Well, I know, but like he's the one that the Daily Stoic always always reads. Posts, All, yeah. Marcus Aurelius said, "Don't let the things bother you that would bother the average person. Look past them." And you're like, okay. See, that's the kind of shit I need. Yeah, but it's not real. Yeah, it is. It, yeah, Look but, what it's done for me. But, I'm pretty stoic, wouldn't you say? No. Yeah. No, I got an IV with you the other day. You're not a stoic at all. Hey, what <laughs> What are you doing tripping? What's no, in this? What's in this? What's in this? <laughs> Marcus Aurelius would have said. I can t- I, Plug it up, baby. <laughs> Show no, me a thing. I, I, I enjoy because I have crazy anger issues. Like, yes. I'm, like I'm a psycho with my anger. Yeah. So like me seeing that stuff, like really benefits me. It be, I, anything I can get benefit from, I take. But I also, am cynical about certain things. Mm-hmm. Like the cynicism I have about stoicism. It seems to me that all the great stoics we have today are simply reiterating what they've learned in the past. As and that's what they to, all say, though. Yeah, but it's like it's like I need. It's like so. I okay. I get. I really draw energy from um, uh, Instagram uh, people like David Goggins or Cam Haynes. Okay. And, and so, like, but the reason I like Cam Haynes is that his energy is drawn from his childhood and his experiences with his father and him becoming his own man. So those are all his own thoughts. Mm. Like, he formed them all. And so I like that. I love, okay. and like, that, I got really obsessed with football coaches. We did that with Pete Carroll. Yeah. Was, I was like, those are the guys. Now, when you see the guys on online that are like, that are like, just reiterating what they've heard Huberman say, mm-hmm. those are the ones where I go, I can't listen to you. I want to hear the guy. Mm. I want to hear the guy. Like, if I want to know about stoicism, I will sit and read Marcus Aurelius. <clears throat> That's and then fair. I'll interpret it. Yeah, 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 I want to interpret it for myself. I don't want to hear a second party interpretation of ideas and I know that's probably exactly what I'm doing right now, but like, I don't, when I talk about history, but I don't want to hear, I want to hear the guy. Like, when you hear about David Goggins and you hear him not being, like, being afraid of the water and being fat and then overcoming all that or Wim Hof when I when I want to learn about yeah. breathing methods I'll go to Wim Hof as opposed to the third party who's telling me breathing things which they're all useful yeah. but that was my hang up with stoicism yeah there's a lot of people that are like attached those attached themselves to it as like almost like I'm the forefront of this stoicism but it's like no you're just repeating yeah I think that's fair yeah I'm, I'm not listening like to specific people as much as like I love to like read it. Yeah. You know? Well, you're a reader and, though. Yeah, I love reading. So you know? I I can appreciate a reader because when you read, like Rogan's a reader, he reads or, or listens to po- audiobooks. But like, what what <clears throat> what's fascinating about that is then you interpret it, and you interpret it. Mm-hmm. When you're forced, you interpret it and you you spit it out. And I guess that's what the Daily Stoic's doing too. I, mm-hmm. I guess I, I'm, I'm not shitting on him. Ryan Hamilton is his name. Ryan Holiday. Ryan Holiday. He's fucking awesome follow. <laughs> He's an awesome follow. But I do get hung up on stoicism a little bit. Let me tell you about my friends at American Financing. They are a family-owned mortgage company that's been around for 25 years. They're saving homeowners, just like you, an average of $854 a month by tapping into their home's equity to pay off high interest debt. Mortgage rates are now in the fives, much lower than they've been in a long time. And all it takes is a 10-minute call to their salary-based mortgage consultants to find out how much they can save you. Think about it. What could you do with an extra $854 a month? That's $10,000 a year. Call today. They never charge any upfront fees, and you may even be able to delay two mortgage payments. American Financing. American Financing. 800-852-2010. 800-852-2010. That's 800-852-2010. Or visit AmericanFinancing.net. 
NMLS, 182334, NMLSConsumerAccess.org. APR for rates in the fives start at 6.799% for well-qualified borrowers. Call 800-852-2010 for details about credit costs and terms. This podcast is sponsored by Mad Rabbit. Mad Rabbit is committed to reinventing to two aftercare, founded by two friends with a passion for ink, just like my daughter's. Mad Rabbit creates simple, effective, and natural products that help improve and preserve your tattoos, all delivered directly to your door. Their hero product, the Tattoo Balm, sells once every 90 seconds for a reason. It revitalizes, replenishes, and preserves tattoo ink with clean and natural ingredients, and it's effective on both old and new tattoos and all skin types, even my wife who has bumpy skin. Plus, They've got all products you need for your tattoos from a tattoo sunscreen to a tattoo soothing gel to a lotion and more. Trust me, my daughter Georgia is covered in tattoos. It was her body, her choice. And to let her know that I was cool with it as a parent, I sent her a whole line of Mad Rabbit. And it was nice. She got all the products and she was like, that's really cool of you, dad. And I was like, listen, I love you. I love you. I love you. If you got a kid doing it, or if you have tattoos, now's the time to try out Mad Rabbit. They've preserved over 3 million tattoos, and they've got an exclusive offer just for BirdCast listeners. If you go to madrabbit.com slash BirdCast and use promo code BirdCast, you'll receive 25% off. That's 25% off when you head to madrabbit.com slash BirdCast and use our promo code BirdCast. I'll tell you, I'll give you a perfect example of a thing I'm chewing on right now. This is horrible to say, but like, so the Earth's like 85 million years old or whatever. And uh, I off a podcast I listened to. It's a pretty good podcast. <laughs> and it talks about humans coming out of trees and walking on two feet because they needed to see better. Like, all the stuff. It's a really great uh, listen. But I'm amazed at the arrogance is, like, the most intrinsic value with humans is the arrogance that I made a joke about last night. Every hot chick on Instagram thinks she invented hot chick. And you're like, no, bitch. They've been around way. And by the way, mm-hmm. it goes away. It goes away. And and comics feel that way. We think when we when we pop, we think I'm the guy. And you're like, oh no, 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 you're not the guy. I I felt it. I was like, I must be the guy. And then you're like, for a second, you forget that David Spade was selling out <laughs> nine shows at fucking the Tempe Improv. And that that the, all those all those greats before you opened doors for you mm-hmm. to get there. Yeah. And the thing I have about global warming is I was like, so you're telling me. In the 85 million years on this earth, we can can change it. We can't change it. Like Mm. we, it's been happening so fucking long. And for 85 million years, there has not been a dent. But you're saying now we're like, I just like, I get obsessed with like the arrogance of us thinking it was us. Like us. That we can do anything about it. Or that we did it. Right. We didn't do it. You're changing a car is not going to make like there's 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 fuck, so much there's so much yeah. it's so fuck and by the way the also the arrogance that a comet won't hit us like I, like like I just get in the scope of things when you I never realized that the world was eighty five million years old yeah if you'd ask me how old the world is I'd say eight thousand years. I really honestly dude, the world know. is old as fuck. Dude. <laughs> it's old as fuck. Eight thousand years, years prime, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's fair. Fuck the world, yeah. dude. If you said 8,000 years, I, you'd be like, oh, damn, that's cool. Yeah, like, well, I, okay, so we're in, like, year 2000, right? So there's 2,000 years bef- when Jesus was born 2,000 years ago. Sure. And then, obviously, another 2,000 before they started Mesopotamia, right? Yeah, when, mm-hmm. when we're dinosaurs. And di- 85 million. Fuck. 85 fucking million. Years ago? So you're talking about, you want to talk about being a blip in history? There were, there were real, the very first smart monkey was, like, Fucking 65 million years ago. Wow. And then all that, they were talking, I saw a post on Instagram saying, in the year 3025, we will no longer have ears. Cool. And and I was like, what? Wait, how did they <laughs> get there? Who made that prediction? Yeah, how did, yeah, exactly. how did they get, yeah, how did they exactly. get there? There's some arrogant human who's like, I can predict the future. I remember when they said that in the year 2000, like all the computers yeah, were well, going to shut, shut down. down. Yeah. Like our dicks were going to fall off. Like babies were going to become racist. Yeah, it was just like yeah, everything. Y2K. The, you know, <laughs> that's the evolution. Did you guys freak out about that? Right? Yeah. 
Really? You freaked out over Y2K? Bought into it, yeah. Yeah, but I was I was at that age where I did have an email address. I did have a cell phone. Yeah. I, like, it was real for me. Okay, that's different. Like, you guys were younger. You guys yeah, were, like, yeah, in yeah. high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, in I was junior high. I was at a party doing coke in West Palm <laughs> going, it's all going to shit. Yeah. It's all going to shit. I would scrap all my CDs. I can't listen to them anymore. They won't work. Everything. And then, and then it clicked. And there was a girl. We were at a party. And this girl turned on her computer and hit it. Uh-huh. He goes, it still works. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was the same moment. shit with like the, the Mayan calendar. Yeah. yeah. 2012 was yes. supposed to be like the they year where. They made a movie where, about it. Yeah, they made a movie about it. Was it. That? Was it that was the, the Rock. Journal? The Rock was in it? <laughs> I think The Rock was cool. uh, He might have been yeah. in it, maybe. But then when that happened, uh, all of a sudden they tried to like backpedal and they're like, well, the Mayan calendar might be off by a year or two. But also, who are these people that are yeah. like fucking spewing this to us to make us believe this shit? They were our. <laughs> okay, that's the the beauty is you, you, you they were this? there. They were uh, Al uh, Al Gore then. Yeah. They were the ones like telling us, you know, this was determined. This is destiny, manifest destiny. Mm-hmm. We will not be able to use our. We fucked up when we made computers. We meant it the other yeah. way. Around. Oh, we're f-, and like so. It's like I don't know. I just feel like life is so fleeting. We, to, I, I don't. And obviously, I don't want to talk about too much about our weekend, but like. There was a great guy that said the other day, the only thing you can guarantee, the only thing is guaranteed is death. And you get to determine what happens before that. And we, we make, what would he say? We cool shit happens. Cause we make cool, cool shit. shit. Happen. Yeah. 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 And I went, Oh, I, no, cool I, I was shit, like, it was cool. Shit will happen. Uh, only if we make cool, cool people do cool, cool shit. No, it was, I'm better than you. No, no. it was, <laughs> it was, you haven't done shit with your life. No, it, you're a cool, loser. Yeah, uh, no, it, was cool. it landed so heavy on me because I yeah. was like, I was like, yeah. yeah, you you will die. It will go dark. Yeah. It mm-hmm. will go dark, and then nothing matters. Nothing matters yeah. if, if there's no God, which a lot of people believe. Then it'll just go dark, and it'll be dark for me the way it was all those years before, those 85 million years before. And then I go, so what? Like, what is the? How do you affect change? But you can't. You just just fucking. Seize the day and live every day like it's your last and you take chances and you love life and you be good to people. You recycle when you can. Yeah. But, but see, also- that, that's that's kind of a stoic mentality. Yeah. What you just yeah. did right there. Well, then I don't even need to read the book. I got a, <laughs> I got a question. Do you think about bucket list shit yet? Are you at that stage in your life when you're like, I'm going to make one and maybe, you know, not even only film it for content, but are you thinking of that shit? Like, do you... I have things... You on- do. You've done so much. So it's yeah. like, there's, you know, even traveling... It's, I always think that's probably the next thing for most people when Isn't they get bucket older. bucket list kind of like a constant go anyway? See places. Yeah, go see places maybe or go on a fucking summer. Yeah. I don't know. like Or things you just, how about not even bucket list? Things that you're just like, as I'm checking more yeah. uh, career accomplishments off, you, and you're like, all right, well, what else do I like? Movies, tour, you know, like festivals. So it's like, what's the next thing <clears throat> that you just want to do selfishly now? Well, I have uh, car- obviously career things, but I don't think they're in my bucket list. Right. But- um, I, my problem is I never really had, I was never a bucket list guy. Yeah. And then I did travel channel and I did <clears> so <throat> many things that I never thought I'd do. Right. That when I got done with that, I was like, I want to do shit. I don't, I just want to be home and do shit like that. I think my bucket list, one of my big bucket list things was to learn how to surf. Um, I would love to go to India by myself. I would love to go by myself to India. Um, I want to take Leanne to Paris I want like I want to take the girls. I love taking trips with my girls. Yeah. But like, as far as bucket list shit, like I, I mean, I know what I want. I want to live on a beach, and I have a bar on a beach. I've already told you the bar. It's called Foxy's in the British Virgin Islands. I would love to buy Foxy's, and I'd love to live on a beach until I was like eighty-five years old and be the guy that people are like, you got to have a beer with Bert. <laughs> like that would be cool as fuck. Why yeah. specifically do you want to go to India by yourself? Like for some self intrinsic like- value. Yeah. I want to. I. I'm so. I'm so dependent on so many people right now that I, and I, I say all the time, I used to do this by myself. Like, uh, it was a really great example. Peter, I can show this a little bit, right, Peter? Like Peter the other day was like, Hey man, we're driving through my hometown. I know we're supposed to fly to Atlanta. Is it cool if I stop by, spend the day with my dad and I'll meet you in Atlanta. And I was like, yeah, cool. And then panic started setting in. I was like, well, hold on. How do I get into the airport? He was like, I got a car for you. And I was like, who's getting me through the airport? And he was like, well, you, you, I mean, you can do that. And I was like, no, yeah, I know, I know. But like, what, what, who's getting me at the airport? Like what, what what's our, what hotel are we staying? And I hadn't done that in so long yeah. that I was like, started panicking. I made Kyle come. Cause I got like, 
And in a weird way, I knew I could do it by myself. I used to do all this by myself. But like there is a part of me that like <laughs> is very dependent on, on a lot of people to get shit done. And I don't, maybe it caused me anxiety in the past. And now that I have this, this blanket, like I don't worry about it. But like I would love to go to the airport, get on a flight, flight to India. First class, I'm not going coach. But like, <laughs> and then go to India and figure it out. Like figure it out and go like, all right, I need to get a hotel. Like, I just think that I, I haven't done that in so long. Even when I do it with Leanne, I'm a fucking pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, <sighs> what, what, what you're supposed to do check on. What the fuck are you doing? Like, why are we going to wait for that baggage claim? What the fuck? Like, I'm a mess. Yeah. They, should, they should put you on the next season of Naked and Afraid. <laughs> yeah. You think See you can survive can that? that? I can do anything. Now here, that, uh, that's the state. I can do anything. Everyone can do anything. Uh, that's the thing that I get from what's like, the, What's something you feel like you can't do? If you oh, like okay, you, like like physical competition, so I probably can't run as fast as Cat Williams. <laughs> I can't read as many books as he does. <laughs> yes, uh, like I, I like uh, like there's certain physical things that I go like like I even I never thought I'd be able to bench 300 pounds, but I think I'm there now. Uh, the but like something I can't do. Like I think I'd have a hard time completing the Ironman. I know that I think your my body would give out at a certain point. But I think if I trained for it, I could do it. Like, even running the marathon, I was like, I know I can do anything I put my mind to. Like, I know I can just put one foot in front of the other for five hours. That's it, that's doable. And so I did the marathon, but at a certain point, my body started giving out. And, I, mm. and that's the first time I realized, oh, you are not you are not guaranteed everything by just hard hard work and, yeah. and willpower because your body does fucking break down. Yeah. Mm. The first time or the most I've ever experienced that is that one time we went, hiking in Canada in Vancouver. Yeah. And it was a very steep hike, very not sure footing. And we were with in shape people like his trainer and Peter. And I think Matthew Broussard was with us and we're going up this mountain and my back just hurt so bad that I just physically couldn't do it. And I go, I don't like this feeling of being the weak link. I'm not used to not being able to at least will myself up to not being a liability. And I felt like a huge liability. Did you find it in you though to finish? No. Well, we yeah. ran out of time. No, no, like we literally oh, ran out of time. Oh, you guys want time? We just ran out of time is a nice way to say <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I was slowing so everyone down yeah. so much we had to turn around and go back. <laughs> a lot of people who quit ran out of time. But, <laughs> well, we started getting in shape after that. Like that was, a. I, I got motivated and I was like, let's do well, there this was a guy. There was a guy, Tate Fletcher, who's a badass. Yeah, I love Tate. Tate's the best. And we were at Red Rocks and we were all fucked up and, Dave was doing what he just did to you about us. He was like, you know, we could have done it. It's just if I had stretched. And and he goes, no, you're a decommissioned athlete. Yeah. And he was like, what? And he was like, you, your, you, your brain thinks you're a badass, but you are not. You are fat. You are out of shape. You do. And, and, and it was real, like, tough love. Yeah. But I remember hearing that and going like, oh, yeah, he might be right. Like, I might have these. Wait, Tate said this to you? To, to Dave, all of us. Dave, Dave, He was really? looking Dave. at me. He was Dave. Looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> just looking at just As up. I was drinking beers, like, I don't know if you're right, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's your opinion, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Dave's the same one who thought he could swim from Catalina to Long Beach. Thought. I think Long I can. Beach. Yeah, well, I think that's one of those things. Why do you that, think that? I, I just, mean that in the most respectful way possible. Well, I don't think I could do it tomorrow, but I think I could train <laughs> for it and do it. Well, that's the thing is like. Okay. Here's the other thing is like people go, I can lose weight, but do it. Like do it. Losing weight is so fucking hard. Fucking hard. It's hard. It's, I would, I would argue losing weight's easier or harder than quitting drinking because like I've done both. And you, first of all, it's like, I, I tether my drinking now the same way I do with my diet. Whereas I go, all right, I know that there won't, I want to have treats every now and then, but I can't live a life filled with treats the way I did. And food's like that with me. Like last night I was looking at your fucking French fries. Do you see how I go, you're going to wrap those up? Oh yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> and I, I can't like, eat them. I can't eat them. I'm not allowed to eat them. Yeah. <laughs> but I looked at them like, motherfucker. Really I had all good, these too. things about the positives of French fries in my head. <laughs> yeah. But like I do that with booze. Like last night I was like, I had a drink and I was like, okay. If I want to get good sleep, I got to go to bed. I'm going to smoke weed. I'm going to get my bed. I'm going to listen to a podcast. Like I, that's, and so, but with diet, man. Diet's tough. Do you think last that's night, struggle. do you think last night, because you were saying I want to get a good night's sleep and not uh, drink as much. And so you had discipline over that. But is there something like, let's say that 
Kyle Rittenhouse looking kid that walked through the casino while we were uh, hanging out and was like, <laughs> that was hey, so just out of nowhere goes, Bert Kreischer, you want to win some real money? Follow me. And then kept walking like you were going to just get up and follow him, yeah. Yeah. which I thought was very confident and also very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. And and then and then hovered and then said it again. Hey, real money is this way, baby. What was the game he, he was trying to get you to play? <laughs> Back rack. And he had just learned how to play. You could tell. No, he he said it. He oh. said it, yeah. He was up 40 bucks. He goes, Bacharach, yeah, baby, I go on a play. He goes, I just learned. Your new nickname like, is Bert Bacharach. Let's go, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is there a world where you would have gotten up and been like, ah, fuck it. Yeah. 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 Maybe I 10, love adventure. 10. Yeah. I love Even story. The, yeah, for sure, right? I don't need it to, I don't need the, I don't need the math to work out <laughs> yeah. ahead of time. Figure I just, it out. Yeah, show up. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah, y'all yeah. fuck with adventure heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what a great thing I mean, is to It's called white privilege. I know, right? I'm a little more laid back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all jump into white the world. White privilege. <laughs> Y'all yeah. fuck with adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. like someone yeah. who already read the book yeah, and me. tell you it's oh, a good Like I told you, when God. I found out about Applebee's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, damn, this That's place exists. <laughs> it's just wild. Is that like, is that, what's the equivalent? Like, like when I found out about Roscoe's in LA, I fucked that. That was a big deal. Is that yeah, like your Applebee's? That's how it was with Applebee's. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. When I was When I was in high school, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, at this fucking, I'm telling you, I didn't know what fucking happy hour was. Wow. But they, they, they give you the happy hour. That is a very white thing, isn't it? Very white thing. Happy hour. And yeah. I like a lot of a white shit. Hour. I like a lot of yeah. white shit. I like a lot of white shit. It's funny. I like a lot of black shit. You do? Yeah, but I can't really immerse myself too much. Bro, when I walked on that bus and I saw that Martin Luther King picture, I was like, <laughs> is this for me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Bert, you, you don't, don't have to do. I was like, I already like you. I already like you. Yeah, but I was invited like, me on tour, man. You're, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. overkill. You already yeah. got me. <laughs> There's a Rosa Parks picture in the yeah, bathroom. Yeah, I know, He's right? like, nice, right? We just added that. Yeah. All right. We used to have Rosa He's got Parks African, African tribal stuff up in there. Did you really? Yeah, I used to have books on them. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and then when you part of the bus were they in? By my seat. Okay, so when they were in the back. No, 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 by oh. my seat. seat. Oh, oh this, the, yeah. is where I sit. Gotcha, gotcha. I see what you did there. Yeah, I was trying to get you. Oh, I see what you said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were the books? Yeah. <laughs> I got that. Yeah, I got yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I really was confused though when I saw it because I was like, I was like, I'll let him explain it if he wants to explain yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> it would have been funny if you just walked in and go, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> Who's that for? I don't even yeah. know. He greets even... me. What's up, my brother? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't. Know why he's just a good luck charm for me. Like, yeah, I've yeah. had that picture on the bus since we've been touring. Are you superstitious? Yeah, hardcore. Cool. Hardcore. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hardcore. Is Over, that a white privilege thing too? Martin Luther King's in my movie. I, there's a picture of him in my movie. I had a, I was like, yeah, I gotta put a picture of MLK up there. And they're like, I don't know where we're gonna find one in Serbia. <laughs> and they had a hard time finding a picture. They're like, how about Gabriel Pritzip? And I was like, the guy who started World War One, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, no, he's like a fucking legend here. Wow. And I was like, and then I got a deep dive about Gabriel Pritzip. He was a fucking, he was fucking the guy. Damn. You bought that one on the bus in this dope little thrift shop in some small town we were in somewhere. And the old man working the thrift shop was like showing us all this stuff. And you were like, I want that. And he was like, <laughs> you're like, for real. I want yeah. that, you know? Really? Yeah, I'm really superstitious. Over uh, stuff that makes sense, or is it like no, really? It you've, been that, you've been that way since a kid, or what? I walked. I went out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think sports did it to me. Um, but uh, like wearing the same jersey or the same socks for something, or uh, doing. I, I had rituals. I had hardcore rituals. Yeah. I had to do an eye cleanse. Like I'd have to wash my eyes out with these eye rinse before uh, the games. I had to step into the batter's box. I had a certain ritual I would do. Oh, yeah. Where I would clear the whole batter box of anyone's footprints, swipe it clean. Yep. And then I would once, and I look, I go, no, this is my batter's box. And I took the same place on the plate wow. every time. Yeah, baseball is filled with superstitions. Probably out of most out of any sport. Yeah. Don't they like football cap? You know, rally cap. A rally cap. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's that's more like fun. Like I was like deep. Oh, that's not. Like I was deep. And then there's this thing called the yips. And I got the yips for a second. And the yips is when you, you just can't throw the ball. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, you can't, like your brain takes over your muscles and you don't, like when you are an athlete, and this is the thing, was, like they don't get it. They just fucking, their body interacts. But some people get the yips mm -hmm. and like they get it in golf too. And I got that and I had to get rid of that quick. I was like, all right, let's load up some superstitions and we'll get rid of it. Yeah. So wow. like, yeah. Um, what was the one I was going to say? I was just thinking of something. One of your weird superstitions? No, uh, I got. I mean, I, I'm, I, I've talked about it, but when I fly, I have a superstition. I have to shower a certain way. 
Pre-flight. Pre-flight. I have to wash all my body. I have to have all the soap on me at the same time. I squat down. I say I, I say a prayer. I circle myself three times, spike it into my head. I circle everyone in my family three times. I then circle all of us. I spike it into my head, and then I envision the plane taking off six six different ways on each angle. I get it there three times, uh, land, take it in, and then get it there three times, and then I circle my... Uh, it's crazy, but wow. like I used to wear the same thing for every <clears throat> flight, the same outfit. I wore the exact same thing every fucking flight. Same to make sweatshirt. yourself just more comfortable flying. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. nervous. What does your therapist say to that shit? Uh, you know, at one point... They were I mean like, that in the least aggressive way possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. came off very aggressive. <laughs> That's just how I You're talk. You're going to be a great dad, Chappelle. Your kid walks in wearing overalls for the first time. Yeah. You think that looks good? <laughs> you trying to fuck heavy with adventure? What are you, white? <laughs> I'm just curious. That's, yeah. My curiosity is aggressive. Yeah, yeah it is. In the car wow, great. Movies. What a great sentence. Yeah. My curiosity is aggressive. Yeah. That's, a, that's not a bad thing. That's every white chick meeting a black person. <laughs> Hi, where are you from? <laughs> You're darker. <laughs> You're darker. Why are you so dark? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. My third, well, because I, I wonder if there's, because I don't have any of that shit. And I'm always curious about people that have yeah. superstitions because I'm yeah. like, I'm just like, yeah, this life it is, is what life. it is. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, I don't know. But, but initially it was like, hey, it's working. You're flying. That's yeah. what matter. That's what matters. Whatever gets you on the plane, gets you on the plane. Um, uh, I, there's times that I haven't done. They, you try to pinpoint times when you didn't do your superstitions and you still things worked out okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I try to highlight those. Like I'm big with. I'll give you a perfect example. I pulled in to do Shaq's podcast the other day, and I was nervous. I was like, I hope he likes me, and uh, I hope I'm not sharing too much. But there was a fucking twelve foot owl in the backyard, and owls are my spirit animal. It's my totem. I saw the owl and I went, "This is gonna be fucking amazing." I, I have a thing about put you at ease immediately. Yeah, I have a thing about pennies. Like I find a penny, I know that it's gonna be good. And I don't know if my cousin Andrew did this on purpose, but when I did my when I did Hey Big Boy, I got out of the fucking car and I was nervous. It was the second night of taping, and there was a penny right on the ground, right right by the car was. And I was like, shut the fuck up. And then I had two amazing shows. And I know my cousin Andrew's like me. <clears throat> and if I wondered if he was just throwing pennies everywhere, yeah, going, like, going like, going like, he'll have a good show. Yeah. Just throw pennies. Wow. Everywhere. Yeah. For six hours, you're walking past them and he's like, damn it. I got $110 in pennies. <laughs> I mean, look, look at Marshawn Lynch with Skittles, you know, like eating them, like yeah. after touchdowns, having them on his pockets during games. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah. I, I bet there's a, uh, the flying thing. I, w I don't know how you were uh, and uh, any of you guys when you first started comedy and were like, oh, I'm going to have to fly everywhere. So I'm going to have to get over this fear like ASAP. Like I hated it growing up for any trip. And then once I started to kind of get into stand up and I was still hated it or was terrified or whatever, I was like, oh man, like I had a, a momentary thought of like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this because I mean, it's why John Madden, right? Famously like got that they bus and just bus best. to yeah. every game because he's like, I'm not fucking fine. I think it was because of one plane crash. I think that's what prompted they survived and he's like i'm never flying again if we get yeah, out of yeah. this and then he bust everywhere and i in my head i was like didn't even know that could be an option but was like oh i maybe i won't maybe I'll, I'll do a different career then that doesn't involve this much travel because i can't handle it and then just got comfy with it yeah you know? but like superstition whatever makes you comfy yeah well you the crazy thing about your flying shit the only thing my biggest takeaway is you squatting down in the shower and i keep picturing it and i hate it oh <laughs> well, i hate that's you, like man. my least favorite part it's yeah. just like i keep Picturing this motherfucker squatting down and spinning in circles. Covered in soap. Oh, no, no, Covered no. no. It, it's visual. It's all visual. Oh. Um, spin in circles. <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> That's what I thought you were doing. I thought he was, I thought he was squatting down. Fuck. So I'm thinking like, like he's in gorilla mode, <laughs> squatting down and then spinning in a circle. I'm like, damn, bro. No, no. Dude, I, uh, you I miss also, every flight, though. It takes so long. I also <laughs> don't, like, I, uh, I try to read energies and, like, I know that. Like negative energies permeate, and so I, I there's people that I've distanced myself from in life because I watch their energy, and I was like, Ugh. yeah, and I go, I don't want bad energy around me. Like I can't, I can't be a part of that, man. Like I, uh, things are too fragile in my life to, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, to be, you know. But how'd you catch my energy? I love your energy. Oh. Yeah. Even the way you just asked that <laughs> was so aggressive, but I totally yeah. met you. It was such a sweet, like, 
Like, like, how did you find me? Like, when did you bu- connect with me? Listen, but I, don't know ask, I don't know how to ever- ask it the way you guys ask it. <laughs> the first thing I saw ever about you was that the first thing was that you skateboarded. And I was like, and I, I skateboard. So I was yeah. like, oh, cool. And then I saw you bench 300 pounds or something. And I was like, 315. 315. I was like, God damn, I'm strong. <laughs> Let's as fuck. go. And then I was like, and then everything about you as you unraveled was like the just bizarrest onion where I was like, he's into hardcore? Like, he's, wait, straight edge? Like, wait, what the, f- there was yeah. so much to you that I was like, you don't, you don't get voices like that often mm-hmm. where it's really authentically the person. And so I was fascinated. And then the fact that your name's Chappelle in a business where that's like, starting a car company with the name Ford. You're like, gah, gah, this is going to be an uphill battle. Yeah, I, I, I had to, it, there was someone I had to punk. I won't even mention the name. I'll tell y'all after the pod, but uh, I remember it was when I first moved to LA and they kept going, change your name, change your name, like fucking with me. They were like, hey, he should change his name, huh? He should change his name. And then finally, because I'm like a bulldog, I was like, what the fuck my name got to do with you? Yeah. And this was like right in the hallway at the store. Wow. And then, and then he was like, oh no, you know, man, I was just joking. I was like, I don't, I don't joke like that. Yeah. Oh, I was man. like, this is my name. Neil it has nothing to do with terrified. you. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I wasn't Neil. <laughs> <It's terrifying. laughs> you know what he said yeah. to me the first time he had to bring me up at the store? He goes, they're going to be so excited and so disappointed at the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a perfect All right, Chappelle Lacey. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It'd be funny if you change your name to like Seinfeld or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, t- just, the uh, takeaway from that is. Lateral move. The yeah. takeaway is you cannot listen to absolutely anyone ever. Because yeah. there are so many fucking idiots. There's so many fucking idiots that want to tell you how it's done that when you start listening to them, you you lose your own idea. Yeah. There's, it was a compliment I was paying to you the other day is that you have taken so many chances where the average comic would have been like, if you had said to someone, so you're going to dress up like Dr. Phil and interview comics, and you think that's going to be good. You know there's a real Dr. Phil. So many comics would love to poke holes and stuff before you have... You try your thing, and they never would have seen it hap- working working at all. Mm. Like well, I, when I, I remember when I decided to do the call and stick to work show, and everyone's like, "You can do a show at eleven o'clock in the afternoon. Why? Why wouldn't you just do it at night? No one's gonna come." And then you just go, "Well, it's my idea." And so you can't listen. There's so many stupid fucking comedians. And that's yeah, the type yeah, of energy yeah. that yeah. you were referring to earlier. That you just have to get to a point in your life that you feel savvy enough to to distance yourself from it, or just be secure enough to go like. I'm going to do it anyway and not allow that to like filter in. But when you're starting out, it's tough to not like be that yeah. impressionable to where like, especially if it's somebody older than you. And I would have that when I would start making videos when YouTube first hit. And there was only a handful of comics, the divine and the workaholics guys, Eric Schwartz, right. That were really make making a lot of like just sketches. And I met these film school guys. So they're, they were shooting and editing and, and they were like, oh, yeah, we want to do funny videos because we do special effects. And so they, they made my, the quality of them really good. And then I'd have some older comics sometimes say to me that I looked up to that didn't know well that were like, like, I don't know why you're putting all that time. You should be like, you know, doing open mics. I'm like, oh, I'm doing open mics too. I'm just also trying to do this. Yeah. And I don't say who they were, but they were like, they were just like, yeah, you're wasting your time with that stuff. And I was like, but why do you? And I was, you know, secure enough to be like, well, I, this is, it's really fun and it's challenging and there's so many things I'm gaining from it. And it's obviously like, transferred into like what I'm doing now as far as take, you know, just yeah. trying a bunch of different shit. But I remember being affected by it still because I was like, fuck, I look up to these guys and they're telling me, so I would go, oh, maybe I should stop doing that and do try to do nine open mics instead of four or what, and yeah. stop making videos or whatever. But it was like such yeah. a weird thing for someone to even care about in hindsight. Well, meanwhile, yeah. you got to look at those people and what they're doing. And yeah, you go, wait, but I wasn't. I was just like, no, they're right because they're older or they're just more. Yeah, they're they're headlining around the country, so they figured it out. That's so. what I'm saying. No, no matter what scale, like I feel yeah. like you just got to fucking. It's like, well, you do this. You Don't know? you like, ever want to also get in the way of someone's shit when it doesn't like? That's just such a weird notion to be yeah. like, you shouldn't do that. And it's like, where's that well, coming yeah, from yeah. on the person that's? I have a much bigger fear of regret than I have a fear of like failure. So, I mean, I think if you just do it and even if it doesn't work, like if you do call in, you know, sick to work show and nobody showed up, then all right, you can turn the page in your brain and go on to the next thing and know that you tried it, it didn't work, you know, but if you never do it, then you're always like, man, I should. And then eventually someone will do it and succeed. And you'll be like, damn, that guy did it first. This is what we were talking about the other day about, you know, p- people that maybe don't watch certain things, but it's like, it is somewhat imperative. I feel like, or even like the hanging out part, it's good just to kind of have an overall 
view and scope of like what is going on because I think it, hopefully you can get to a point. The whole compare and despair thing that everybody has done in the entertainment business and in life, even if you're not in our business, of looking at stuff online and and feeling bad about yourself or thinking, oh, fuck. But if you can use that as fuel and to be like, oh, like you were just saying, then I think there's a lot of value in in seeing so much and feel and and using it to like go, fuck, like look like like what you did with the outdoor thing and those guys being like, wow, okay, I thought I had no options, but mm -hmm. he did that. So now what's my version of that? Or, you know, just getting, um, like you said, inspired, which is, at least for me, Ooh. personally speaking, getting uh, shut up, Dave is uh, <laughs> something I'm on somewhere now. Uh, is getting inspired. Uh, how often do we all like actually have? Like I remember the last time I got inspired from an acting performance with he was Heath Ledger um, as the Joker, yeah. where I truly was watching the movie, and as an actor was like, oh my god, like yeah. I gotta fucking get back into clutch. Like I just was moved by it, you know, yeah, and yeah. I and. I don't think that's honestly happened from a performance since maybe a movie for sure. Yeah. But where you truly are just hit over the head and, and, and like, don't just make a list of like tomorrow I'm getting after it. You're just like right then and there, you know, you drop stuff because you're like, I have to now act on how I'm feeling is more rare than not. Yeah. You do pay attention to a lot. Cause you said something that you, uh, about me cause I don't drink or do anything. You, and you thought you said something about how impressive it is that I can like keep up and hang even though I literally do nothing. <laughs> Truly. And on the flip side, for us to be around such a buzzkill, it's like we have to, uh, <laughs> like it's impressive that we still allow you to like, no, joke. But your constitution's impressive. It, it really is, dude. The what? Your constitution. Sorry, that was aggressive again. The what? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's all, me, it's, it's, it's the, the, I love the phrase constitution and I yeah. think I came to it early in all my phrases and I think I overuse it. Mm -hmm. But it's the, mandates that you as a government wrote up for yourself that you'll adhere to. Yeah. And I think it's badass. Like, I think your constitution is badass and it doesn't waver. In times mine, 100% wavers. Yours is steadfast and you go, no. And you don't yeah. think about it twice. You just go, no. And it's not like you were a square who didn't drink. Like, you know what it's like to party. Yeah. And you just go, no, this works for me. Yep. Yeah. And even if you go to fucking Council Oak and you're like, no, I'm good. That's why, like, when I when I got hit up to do this, I was like, the first thing I said was like, oh, I don't drink. Uh, <laughs> thinking that yeah, that was, first that thing was I a said. part of the yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, oh, I don't drink. Breaker. Oh, I've had drinkers come on, and like, I don't know who. I wish I remember who. It might have been Pat Pat Bircher, mm. and he was like, he like pulled me aside. He's like, I, I and they were told they told me you're you're healthy and you're trying to stay healthy. We're not supposed to be a bad influence. And I was like, no, fuck that. I told you that. I was like, I get down. I still get, like, we went out and fucking lit one up in an Irish pub one night. And I was like, I get down. It's just, like, I am trying to be healthier. Yeah, I just want to yeah. be, I just want to, I just, I don't like, you know, I, I obviously I don't want to, I don't want to share, I don't want to share anything about our trip, this, <clears throat> this, this trip. But fucking some prophetic things were said that it really landed on me heavy. And I, and I'll cut it back to like when I I saw Dave Matthews perform at some festival. I think you might have been there with me in mm. San Diego, Wazoo or Quazoo or some mm. shit. And I saw Dave Matthews on stage. I was a mess. I was partying a lot, and and he was so filled with joy and health, and he was and he looked good, and his shirt fit good, and he had cool shoes on, and he was smiling, and he was in the moment. You could tell he was full of life. I was like, that is inspiring. And I think for me, I, I people know I still party, but like I go, when you see me on stage, I I don't want you to see a pickup truck that's breaking down. I want you to see a, a car that is is moving good. And like to have energy on stage is so much better than to be drunk and and be wild and crazy. Yeah. Like no one wants to reckless. see you drunk and reckless and sloppy and and feel bad for you or see like when I was 275, there were people that, I mean, the internet's fucking good. And they, and internet, no, <laughs> internet, internet no, man knows shit internet about you. It's, unde it's undefeated. It's undefeated. undefeated. It's like ketchup. It's undefeated. Bro, there was, a, I guess, I never saw it, but Red Band told me about a Reddit thread about me dying. Oh, God. And everyone was like, he's going to die, man. Look at his face. Like, they, wow. knew, they knew shit about me that I thought was a secret that I was like, you can't really tell that I'm. Yeah. And they were like, nope, look at, look at his face. Look at his feet. Look how swollen his fucking ring is. Like they were, they would pick me apart and it was all shit I thought was lighthearted jokes or whatever. And it was yeah. all stuff bothering me. And that's when I was like, 
I was like, man, I don't want to be mm -hmm. someone because if the people that hate you see it, it's just yeah. a matter of time that the people before the people that love you love see you it. See well, you look it, at yeah. Farley uh, in his early days when he was parting versus like when he went back to host SNL like a year or two before he passed. I mean, it was like, and cast members have talked about it. Like he just looked like just bad. So he was still funny, but you were like, it wasn't like he was when he was it's vibrant your, and funny. It's and your like, voice, yeah. your voice. Yeah. So like our voice is our tool. And when I'm partying, my voice starts going out. And 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 with Farley, his voice was going out. It was getting it's, really just yeah. like that. And it's alcohol, it's cigars, it's weed, all it's thrown up in your throat while you sleep. It's all that shit. And you're when when you have power in your voice, when I have power in my voice on stage, I'm in so much more control. Yeah. I'm in mm. so much more control. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I, yeah, I think that's like a big reason why I don't do anything because I know what it's like to do all that shit. And then also I've never had the things that I have currently. So I was like, yep. you know, because I didn't have it when I was like doing all the crazy shit. But to like have the things like as someone who doesn't do anything at all, like now I'm just like, oh, whoa. Yeah, I want to keep that. Follow up. Fun question. Fun. But yeah, who would be the person or group like if Oasis showed up to Salisbury? Uh, I'm making you drink. <laughs> <laughs> if, the, if the Gallagher brothers yeah. are like, all right, mate. Oh, this might. goes out to Chappelle. We're going to have a point. <laughs> you want to have a point with us? Oh, you know, one point turns into six. Come on. <laughs> Who's going to have one point? I probably know? still wouldn't do it. Milk. Really? Wow. Yeah, I'd probably be like, I'm all set. Yeah. Wow. I love, I like, I love, I listen, I, listen, I love Oasis, yeah. but I also love me. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, love, do, I love, I would do coke off both their cops. <laughs> yeah. And I, don't and do I love anymore. what I'm doing too much. <laughs> They're my 18th favorite band. You got to yeah. realize, I've, grow, I've grown up too crazy. And just, so there's nobody that could admit that because I think no everyone has it, no. like somebody that you'd be like, fuck, like if I like no. Willie Nelson or Snoop, like Snoop asked me, like that's, yeah. you know, I want to smoke weed with Snoop back. I'm like, I is, like you Snoop, but not, not uh, that much. Cool. Wow. Yeah. But you, you stopped drinking uh, because you knew it was just better for you to be more disciplined like that. Or you legit were an alcoholic. Yeah. Like, well, and also like my brother had died. I had a brother that died. And when he died, I just fucking went fucking. Yeah. That sobers you up. Yeah. But I was already, like, drinking, like, in a way that, you know, wasn't the best. Like, I told you, I was like, I love wild turkey. Yeah. Like, no yeah. one loves wild turkey. Yeah, I guess <laughs> No one loves right. wild turkey. <laughs> yeah. But the fact that I was like, I love wild turkey. And then I, <laughs> I was telling Kyle what I used to do. So I go to, there was this other, uh, there aren't many bars that serve wild, wild turkey, right? Because no one's drinking it. But there's one bar that I had in my neighborhood that would serve it. And I'd go there, and I'd be like, Wild turkey on the rocks, double, whatever. And I would get it. I'd take a straw and I'd go. And I'm like, all right, let's get the night started. And I would just fucking go. And you start doing backflips through the Yeah, oh, bar. dude. Backflips drunk was like fucking. No way. Oh, gosh. It was like the easiest thing. For me. I'd be like, no. what's up? <laughs> oh, man. Can you imagine someone oh, backflipping into Hold a party? On, someone? someone? <laughs> you mean a black guy backflipping? Yeah. <laughs> it, like, like, just like you're at a bar and like. Usually brothers just kind of hold it down. Yeah. yeah. They're cool as shit. And then all of a sudden, oh. suck down a wild turkey and hit a backflip. I was I'm like, like, guys, we're partying yeah, tonight. Yeah. We found uh, a leprechaun. <laughs> this is going to be a lucky night. Yeah. Oh, my God. Doing the backflip, that would, that would bring, you know, some of the, some of the women in. Oh, oh my yeah. God. You know how many hand jobs I've gotten on the dance floor? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Dude, that is a great sentence. <laughs> so from, many. So, yeah, an aphrodisiac for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. Because oh, that's also a physical... Oh, say it again? Yeah, a back backflips. Flip is, yeah. Backflips and aphrodisiac. You're drunk? That sounds like a cool yeah. line. It's like, this guy can't do it because everyone's doubting you. Because they're like, we just saw you chug that, that wild turkey right there. You can't do it. Oh, I can't? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm your huckleberry. Imagine being... <laughs> 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 That's yeah, just imagine my game. <laughs> being that girl that who sees you do that, who is just like you know, and maybe even prior to that, you know, Jennifer, like you got, you'll find your guy. I just want a guy <laughs> that can drink wild, drink wild turkey and backflip out of nowhere. Well, he's around the corner, and you just fucking hear that. Like, you just, yeah, the girl she turns like, oh. around, and sees you do it. Dude, I, used to, I used to do dance battles against people, and I'd always bust it out. Then, then if, and if they were really good at dancing, I'd bust out like. So there's this thing called it's called a standing full. It's basically like a 360 backflip. Like just standing, and I would do that, and that's what like would kill. Did it ever shit. go bad? Did you ever take a big spill in the no. bar or anything? Uh, I'm like a fucking cat. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> like, Not anymore. 
Just not anymore. Get not anymore. Jobs on the dance floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cut to me at an Irish bar tonight. <laughs> I got five hundred bucks. <laughs> Nobody can. I got. I got. Hear you, hear you. Hell yeah! I've already thought about tonight. I've been. I've been loose we, about tonight. What are we gonna do? I don't know. I was thinking six okay. Guinnesses on stage. I was like, I don't know. It's it's St. Patty's Day, and I have a problem with celebrating. Like I have a problem with missing celebrations. Yeah, and then, yeah, and FOMO for for the the fun holidays. Wait, yeah. so wait, have have you always gotten down on St. Patty's? Yeah, that's like that's your day. See, <laughs> that, see, that's the thing. That's 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 the difference between us. See, when I drank, I went to one St. Patty's thing. I said I'll never do this again. Even when I drank, I said I'll never do this again. Really? I was like, I'm all set. This is too much excitement. Oh, I, I was like, this is too yeah. much energy. Just fucking way. like for what? I got some yeah. great St. Patty's days. I have my favorite. Hand jobs on dance floor? No, no, no. No, was okay, drugs. different. <laughs> my buddy, we used to go to this place called Pop Bellies in Tallahassee. And uh, this is before cell phones. And uh, the phone rings at the bar and they're like, Bert. And I go over, I'm probably like fifth year senior at the time, sixth year senior. And it's my buddy Hutch. And he's like, yo, I got mushrooms and a, and a Vespa. You up for a journey? And I was like, fuck yeah. And we took mushrooms and drove through. He came over. We had a few, ate mushrooms, had a few beers. And then we got on a Vespa and I sat backwards. And we drove through Tallahassee's campus. And I just looked and I had the best fucking day of my life. What'd you see? Everything. I saw that. I saw the leaves were so vibrant. Yeah. And there were so oh, many Oh, you said leaves. it's on shrooms. Yeah, it's on mushrooms. Yeah. When you have leaf appreciation. I have, I have tree appreciation. Tree appreciation. I used to go out. When, Great band name. In our old. Yeah. <laughs> Folk man, tree, yeah, they are a folk band. Yeah, they're so yeah. folk. Man. I, uh, I, I used to Franco go covers. out to our first house we had. I planted all the ficus in the backyard, and I would get high, and I would go and I would talk to them individually, and be like, you know, you're my big guy. You get all the sun, but listen, I need your little brother on the end's not getting any sun, so you got to give him love. You got to find a way to give him oh love. My God, and I go to the next one. I planted five ficus in the backyard, and then I go around to all the trees and just talk to them. And like, be like, because I believe they can hear you. Sure. I told you that my favorite high realization, this is a high thought, was I was in my backyard or at our house now. And I got high. right when I started smoking weed. Dan Soder got me high. Mm. And I got home. I was really high. And I was having a cigar. And it was the sun setting. And I went, these are my trees. Like, mm. they weren't planted knowing they'd be mine. But now they're mine. And I don't get to keep them forever. Wow. But I get to have them now. And they're mine. But one day they're going to be someone else's. I wonder if they're going to remember me. And I was like, it was just like a crazy uh, high thought yeah. where I was like, can we get some of that weed? <laughs> that, to be starting to feel a connection to the trees like that. But that is, yeah. that makes sense. I mean, it's, you know, you planted them there. I mean, oh, yeah. It's... Someone else is going to move in here and like have no connection maybe. And then yeah. like, are you going to go back and visit the trees and knock on the door? Hey, do you mind if I say what up to my trees real quick? The guy's like, can you please leave? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call the cops. I have a, I have we knocked a... him down for a fire pit area. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I have a crate myrtle that uh, I planted. It was a big one too. I was like, we didn't have a ton of money, but we wanted to, crepe myrtle in the thing and so i bought it It was like i want to say it was like 800 dollars. an expensive tree and i planted it i dug the hole i planted it and i look at that tree all the time and i remember him laying on his side in the grass as i dug the hole and i was just looking at him like setting up his life and i was digging wow. a hole and i was like i was like man i'm never gonna forget you and i remember there was a little branch growing to the bottom and they told me i should cut it off because it would grow better if i didn't grow that little branch and i went no, you it's can't. It's a part of him. It's a part of him. Don't wow, dude. Him. And I let it grow. And now that little branch is a big part of the tree. Dude, even in the tree business, <laughs> people don't fucking know. It's just like we were talking about with comics being like, dude, don't do that. Like nobody knows. Even in the tree world, some guy was yeah. like, dude, you don't need that branch. It's going to hold that tree back. And you're like, that's actually what's going to define that don't tree. Don't you love a tree that has, don't you love a tree that at the very beginning sprouts off big? So you can like climb up on it. Fuck yeah. Like it's the best. I don't climb trees anymore. I used to. Yeah, every kid. tree should have tree climbing capabilities. Bro, this conversation. <laughs> this is why Are you, you should white, huh? yeah, oh white, Wait, wait if this isn't a good PSA here. for you not to do drugs, I don't know what is. <laughs> Adam and Bert are like, you sure you don't want to smoke like, weed, man? You ever seen a tree just like. But you know what? I feel like. I, I love that. And I'm not dissing I it. Totally. I, think no, no. It's, it's, I love that that's a conversation that I feel very passionate about. Yeah, but the passion behind it is like, <laughs> and I'm just like back and forth, like watching, like this is, 
<laughs> it's basketball right now. <laughs> is that what, now, are you looking at being like, that's some white guy shit or that's some stoner shit? Nah, that's not white guy shit. Yeah. I know black people that love trees. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Prove it. Call them up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll call my cousins right now. <laughs> hey, you like trees, man? Damn frogs. Yeah, yeah you know so. I love trees. <laughs> you think I don't like trees? <laughs> yeah. Royal Palms. <laughs> How do you think to... I don't like no trees? <laughs> we, had, we used to have this Daniel. old black yeah. man that would come to our house. He showed up at our house, our first house, and uh, knocked on the door. I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to call Leanne. I forget his name, but mm. it's a good name. Oh, she just called. She did karaoke last night in in Koreatown. Best place That's to do the it. Best place oh to do God. it. Oh my God! Yeah, in Koreatown. Oh yeah, Koreatown. I live close to Koreatown. They, Let's go. I'm off close. Hey, I'm doing a podcast right now. What was the name of that old black man that used to cut our trees? Oh crap! I can't remember. Mister Mister. I can look it up. No, don't you worry about it. it. No, I'm good. I'm sorry. That's okay. Was was his name Lloyd? L- Lloyd. Uh, it was. Lloyd. Was, he was Mr. Lloyd. Mr. Lloyd. Oh, he, was, he was the best. Yeah, he was the best. He's like, hang on, I'm gonna, I'll, do you, I'm, I'm gonna keep you on the phone. So we had a, a king palm in the back that was like king palms were filled with fucking shit up top, and he gets up there and he yells down. It's good you got an old black man like me cutting these trees. I said, why is that? And he goes, I ain't scared of these rats. And I went, there's rats up there? And all of a sudden you hear, and they're fucking falling out of the tree. He's just kicking them out of the fucking tree. What? Dude, he'd come. We didn't even, he would show up. Lloyd Gamble. Mr. Gamble, Gamble. yeah. (laughs) Lloyd Gamble. Gamble. Lloyd Gamble. Lloyd Gamble. He didn't even, he would just show up and go, it's time to cut your trees. And we go, sure thing, Mr. Gamble. And he'd just cut them up and he'd cut them up. Perfect. Wow. He knew what the fuck, and he had no fear of heights. Cool. He had no fear of animals. He was fearless. How old was he? How old was he, Leanne? He was probably in his seventies. Yeah. In his seventies, uh, out of here, from Louisiana, and had lived in Southern California for a long time. But like born and raised in Louisiana. Did he still have he like the old. Louisiana accent? Oh yeah, yeah. He did. Yeah, he and I spoke Southern. Did he call you guys Bert and Leanna was like Mister Mister Crash. He was the oh, best. No. Oh, and no, then no. he just stopped coming. He would come like every six months, and then he just stopped coming. And well, I left him a message and never heard back from him. So. Oh well, that went south. Yeah. Well, right. I love you. Wait, what'd you sing last night? I love, love you too, baby. Right. Um. Yeah, he would, he would just show Lord up. Lord Gamble, that's a strong black yeah. name. Yeah. Lord Gamble. Yeah, yeah, I cut trees, I fuck up rats. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's so funny. Just if you're a tree, I fuck with you. If you're a rat, fucking I fucking rats. yeah. Just pulling rats out? Wow. Yeah. He was the one, he told me, he said, he said, this King Palm of yours, don't ever get rid of it. So we're building a pool. He was like, make them build around it. I said, why? And, he, and then he said, cool. for every, I'm going to fuck this up. He goes, for every five feet that you get, or every two feet you get out of a king palm is worth $10,000. So really precious trees. And I remember him saying that and going, and I was like, wait, so that's like a 50,000, that's a $60,000 tree? Whatever it was, it was uh, yeah. that was what that tree caught, was worth. He was like, yeah, these are fucking the best trees in LA. And he goes, you got to pineapple them because that's how you cut it. You cut it, it looks like a pineapple and all it sticks out the top. And he goes, they get overgrown and they think they're shit, but you just need someone to pineapple them. We bought our new house. And there were five king palms in the front yard. And this dude, this Mexican dude is like, yeah, those are garbage trees. I'll get rid of them for you. And we're like, what? And he's like, I'll, I'll dig them up. I'll, I'll ship them out of here. Don't even worry about it. And I was like, what are you going to do with them? He's like, ah, just, just, they're not worth anything. And I was like, Mr. Gamble said they're worth like $10,000 every five feet. And he goes, yeah. And I said, I think we're going to keep them. And he was like, we well, there's nothing to do with them. I said, can you pineapple them? And he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, and then, wow. Next guy came in. We got rid of that guy. Next guy came in. He's like, they were trying to get, he goes, you know, that guy was just going to sell them. Yeah. He was going to fucking make $250,000. He gave it away when he goes, they're not worth anything. You probably can't sell these at all. I'll yeah. do you a favor. I'll get rid of them. Yeah. So we kept those King Palms in our front yard and they're fucking gorgeous. <laughs> we get them pineappled and they're fucking gorgeous. Yeah, I don't even know what that tree looks like. It's, yeah. It's it's a badass tree. I'll show you. That, that's Florida shit. You had to trim your palm trees for a couple of different reasons. One, if a hurricane came, mm. you wanted the palms uh, trimmed back so that it was you know more wind resistant. Yeah. And then also coconuts just became fucking cannonballs during a hurricane. <laughs> and then also if you didn't trim them, eventually they would just fall. Yeah. And if your kids playing in the backyard, fucking 
uh, coconut or a palm frond would fucking kill you. Bird almost got killed by a palm frond one time. Yeah. We're at Marco Island. Yeah, see, I'm from Arizona. I don't think I was that fascinated by cactus. Them bitches <laughs> hurt. Cactus will fuck you up, though. Yeah, we have jumping cactus. By the way, these are home. bullshit king palms. These are bullshit ones, right? But they look like they look like this. And so you got to trim that all off and pineapple it, and it, it looks beautiful. Rats get all the way up there? Oh, dude, rats oh, are sure. popping them in L.A. Um, I've seen a few. Yeah, I almost got killed by a palm frond outside of yeah, Marco Island. Marco Island. I went in to get a uh, coffee at Starbucks, and I walked out. I remember my glasses were foggy, so I stopped to like unfog my glasses, and all of a sudden I hear like a thunderbolt hit behind me, and I was like, and this French dude walked up. He's like, "You are a very lucky man," and I said, "Yeah, I know. I'm really lucky. You don't even know." <laughs> and he goes, "No, that would have killed you." And behind me, a big palm frond, maybe like. 400 pounds landed literally feet behind me. It would have killed me. And I remember just walking that day going like, ah, life is so fucking fragile. Yeah. Ooh. Like I am so lucky to be taking every one of these steps. I would be dead, broken neck, fucking shattered skull. Like I would be dead. And I remember being like, holy shit. It landed like I'm talking. I, I remember feeling a little bit of the breeze on my back as it landed, going like, oh, what was that? It's was, it not like a transformer exploded. You have yeah. a new, like, immediately uh, instantaneous new lease on life. I got hammered that night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was of one of the first the weekends yeah. uh, I ever met Bert, and I ran into him, and uh, he's, he's like, I almost died. And I'm like, what? He's like, palm frog almost hit me. And I'm like, this guy's really fucking dramatic. Like, yeah. you, know, you know, coconuts kill more people than lightning. Coconuts, like I mean, that fucking, makes sense. They fall out of trees all the time, and that is a bowling ball. Yeah, like never be under a coconut tree. You see people in Hawaii under like putting their towel out under a coconut tree to get shade, and you're like, uh, uh. Mm. I've seen coconuts fall in Hawaii just, gosh, like a bowling ball. Those, it's amazing the way people die. Like the fucked up. I don't want to die like that. This podcast is brought to you by Helix. The Helix lineup offers twenty unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection. The newly released Helix Elite Collection, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. So how are you going to know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? Very easy. Take the Helix Sleep Quiz. Find your perfect mattress in under two minutes, and your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. And if your spine needs a little extra TLC, they've got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layer on top. It's the perfect combination for comfort and support. I'm telling you right now, the best sleep I get is on my Helix mattress. It is the only mattress I will sleep on. I was having shoulder problems because I'm a side sleeper. Took the sleep quiz, found out the perfect mattress for me. Shoulder problem is gone. There's a lot of side sleepers. Trust me, take the sleep quiz. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows, and their pillows rock for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash BERT and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. You shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fastest, easiest way to buy tickets for all the comedy, sports, music, and theater events near you with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best guaranteed price. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even hours after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. Save up to 60% off buying last minutes for sports, Concert, comedy, theater, etc. I am going to a Dodgers game today. We got, we used game time. Bruce Springsteen is at the forum, April 4th and 7th. Holy God, if you got, you got to go see that show. It's so easy. My buddy Jelly Roll, September 6th, is playing the crypto.com arena. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code BirdCast for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code B-E-R-T-C-A-S-T for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Has lightning taken out uh, like multiple people though? I mean, it's... Lightning yeah, yeah, it's in happened. Florida is... We can't have giraffes at our zoos. Because of lightning. It's a joke. Yeah. Well, yeah. Huh. <laughs> about to say, there's this mountain. I've seen the giraffes in Miami Metro Zoo a lot. <laughs> but it would be scary to be a giraffe in a thunderstorm. Fuck <laughs> We have this mountain back home in Arizona. I forget what it might be Mount Humphreys or something like that. But it's in like northern Arizona. But a lot of people die up there because you're not really supposed to go up there like that. Because like, especially if like there's a storm because lightning fucking, 
is prone to just like hit that place. Greg Giraldo had a, a great joke where he goes, uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a new story of a guy who uh, was married to his wife. I uh, jumped off the cruise ship or no, he, he got uh, struck by lightning uh, 11 times, survived, uh, then went on a cruise with his wife, got in a fight, jumped off and killed himself. And he goes, uh, he goes, God, um, or no, he goes, God himself couldn't take this man out. And he was like, send in the experts. <laughs> meaning, like, <laughs> meaning like the wife got it and it was a fight about like, and then he acted out the whole fight, which was like, you know, I don't want, I just want to come on the cruise and relax. And you tell me I want to do this. I swear to God, I'm going to jump off the fucking Lido deck. You don't have the balls. You know, just. <laughs> yeah, My man. favorite part of that story is that you, <laughs> uh, they were like, did you have like that fucking, I need to live life experience after almost dying and you you got hammered that night yeah yeah <laughs> celebrate i tried to I just, after my first brother died i tried to do that like oh i need to live mm. this fucking life i need to fucking go out and live life to the fullest and you know what i the first thing i went to go do was go boogie boarding in the ocean now i don't swim <laughs> you like don't or can't i i can do it <laughs> shut up you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> You're like but, my wife with dancing. But I fucking went <laughs> the out Dave there. Dave with the triathlon. What was it earlier where you were like, uh, I could do it. Uh, water no, swim, 26 but, miles yeah, from yeah, Catalina yeah, Island. Yeah, yeah, but I went out there and tried to do this fucking boogie board and shit to try because I was like, man, I need to live my, I've never done this, whatever. And that was, I've never even swam in the ocean before. Yeah. And my yeah. first thing to do was like to boogie board. Yeah, heavy like, surf's bro, not a good place to next start. Next thing you know, I'm getting caught in the riptide, which I didn't know what that meant. Oh. And then I had to get saved by a lifeguard. Had no clue what the fuck was going on? This little 18 year old white girl saved my life. Did you feel like you were like getting just Yeah, I was like, why am I going in? back further and further? Oh I was like, it must be like the God. better waves or some shit. That's what happens in um, uh, Australia. Uh, Bondi yeah. Beach is like their, um, uh, there's a reality show about the hot lifeguards. Have you seen it? Uh, I've, been, yeah. I've been a hot lifeguard at Bondi Beach. You have? Yeah, yeah. For what? That's why when you go bucket list, I've done everything. On the, I, for the travel channel, well, show? yeah, with travel channel, when the red speedo with the red cap, yes, dude. That's what, I was a lifeguard. When I was day. down there, I was watching. I got obsessed with that show because it was so dramatic. It'd be like you know, phew, Bondi Beach on today's episode. Of, um, so we're only eight weeks into summer and thirty people are dead. And just right away, you're like, oh man. And then it would be you know the hot lifeguards, and then you know some uh, lost child. But then it was a lot of uh, Asian tourists that would get sucked in, and they'd be like. You know, they just the like, same thing. Didn't know yeah, about didn't know the riptide, the and they'd go really far was. out, and then they'd, uh, yeah, it was hilariously kind of racist like, yeah, too. But but yeah, I was terrified though because yeah. I was just like I kept going back, but I was like, oh, maybe this is for the better waves or something. I didn't didn't really know, but then the lifeguard was like, you're getting caught in a riptide, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. fuck yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> you're welcome. That's how I do nice. it? <laughs> it's like Rib. skateboarding on water, right? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Do you think? Okay, weird weird question. When you say like Asian tourists, I always go, my first thought was, well, yes, there's so many of them on this planet yeah. that, yeah, of course, you're going to see a lot of Asians getting that problem. Like no one says like, man, the Albanians get sucked out like crazy because right. there aren't that many Albanians. Right. Do you think stereotypes have to do with the amount of people have to be there first for you to recognize the stereotype? Like I tried to, mm. I tried, so I listened to this podcast about the Albanian dictator and I was trying to think of like an Albanian stereotype and there aren't any, mm. there aren't the only Albanian stereotype is Albanian cars. It's apparently Albanian millionaires love to put the crest of their flag on the hood of their Lambos. You can find them everywhere. Albanians love their cars, right? That's the only stereotype I could find because there aren't enough Albanians to do enough things. to. Yeah. Make a and I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, when it comes to Asian drivers, is it just that there are so many Asians that like it's just a numbers game where you're like, there's everyone's bad drivers, but you're gonna because there's more Asians, sure, you're gonna notice more Asians. And are we documenting more Asian accidents? Yeah, I don't know. You know? Yeah, like like uh, like or who who maybe one guy had four different accents, and they were all with Asian drivers. So that guy went around telling everyone. everyone yeah. You know how like Asian the diarrhea driver, yeah. song? Everyone knew growing up when you're sliding into first and you feel something burst, diarrhea. Yeah. Who fucking went around and told everybody that song and was like, spread the word. This is going to be the catchiest song of all time. Yeah. Same yeah. thing maybe with the Asian driving stereotype. Maybe one guy had a c couple of bad experiences, told one guy, he it's told like, a guy. It's like, I remember hearing a podcast one time, uh, it, was, it was Rogan <laughs> and he was, talk, he was talking to a statistics person and the guy was saying, you know, certain things show up statistically and Rogan's like, yeah, like every time I get in the shower, the fucking phone rings. And the guy goes, no. What has happened is 
you've been conditioned because it happened a couple times to notice every time the phone rings that you're in the shower. Mm. And then you say, it always happens. Like I always see double numbers, like 11, 11, 12, 12. Yeah. I was, and it's not that I see numbers all day. I see numbers all day, but I, I only register the ones that matter to me. And so they show up and I'm like, Fuck, 11, 11 again. You'll see it. I'd make a prayer every time. Yeah, Even on a yeah, podcast, yeah. I'll make a prayer. Yeah. So we don't commit all crimes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But when you do, we really but notice when you it. you do, yeah. you notice it. We go out with a bang, okay? <laughs> yeah. Black people, it's just a numbers game. Yeah, it's yeah. just a numbers game. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Well, I like where this went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys are actually taught like the whole yeah. prison system is just a numbers game. Yes, that's awful. <laughs> uh. Oh gosh. I love I I I I used to talk a lot about race. I don't do it anymore as much. Mm -hmm. I just it doesn't I don't know if it I think when you get to a certain age, you especially you get to a certain age, you realize how similar people are. Like I I was telling a story the other day about running this old black dude at a concert. We shared a cigar. And I realized me and him have so much more in common than we don't. We're both worried about our blood pressure. Yeah. We're both worried about our weight. We both love cigars. We love whiskey. Like there's so many more things in common than you have than the things you don't. I think that's a youth thing too, is when you're young, you see that everyone's trying to be something maybe different or that they're not. When you get older, you're like, where, where's your daughter go to school? Is she happy? Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's really crazy. So I don't really, I don't really maybe, they don't perk as much as they did when I was younger. When you were younger. Yeah. I like talking about race in the, like, the way of it, like, in that standpoint. Yeah. Like, how we're a lot more the same than we are different, you know? Yeah. Like, I love when I, I like find our about. differences. Like, yeah. cultural differences I find fucking fascinating. Yeah. Like, I remember talking to a dude, and he was like, you never ran a train on someone? And I was like, no. He's like, oh man, you might be gay then. And I was like, what? He was like, yeah, man, everyone runs trains. And then he was with a bunch of other dudes, black dudes, and they're like, yeah, you never ran a train on someone. And I was like, no, like that. And he was like, oh, come on, man, you, you never once. And I was like, that was something to me that like, I was like, that's just culturally, yeah. that was not what we did. It was just me and my friends. Yeah, never I was like, that. I'm a stereotype here. I think it's a uh, pretty black thing to do. <laughs> For real. <laughs> For real? I think so. Yeah. I hear more black people talk about it than I do hear white wow. dudes talking about yeah. running trains. So it's not where he grew up. It's not product of your environment thing. It's more of a just overall cultural thing. Yeah. I yeah, think so. Train. And now how deep is the train? Like four or five people? I'm, it's whatever you want. Dealer's choice, huh? <laughs> dealer's choice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's... It, I'm, I, I, can, I can never do it. That's weird. It, it weirds me out. Yeah. Like I'd have to really be close with that dude. <laughs> yeah man but like how close yeah. like think about that it's a bonding like, activity like, I, I, like I got some really good homies that I'd be like nah like I couldn't can you imagine like like you ever you guys ever been in that situation where you're like with your buddy and you, you know, there's two other girls right and, they're, and the girls are like well we'll do anything you want if you two make out you ever been in those situations nope you never been in that like no, an American no, no, pie no, no. You guys never been in that? Nope. Just me? Don't make me feel like a loner. <laughs> Don't y'all do that. Don't no, you do that. I saw Brad. You guys are older than me. I know y'all. I know you guys have done. <laughs> if you come if, on, Bert. You guys come on, Bert. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I've done it. Yeah, yeah. Was it again? So be like, <laughs> so be like, if there was a girl here and she was like, "Hey, Chappelle, Bert, you guys make out, want to do whatever you." That's your yeah. Talking about. That's happened to me like quite a few times. I go, "What the fuck?" And it's always my homie that's like, "All right, Chappelle," and I'm like, "Bro, if you don't get up off me right now, like straight up." There, I'm like, who's that horny? <laughs> He's already leaning in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she didn't even suggest anything yet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. no. I thought, I thought I heard she did. Yeah. And it's just I him doing a smooth. girl's voice. Yeah. 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 Hey, you're going to make out with your body. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you guys have never been in those situations. No way, man. No, but I've never been with, like, I don't know. I'm, all my interactions have always been pretty tame. Yeah. Like, I, I, don't, I, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wish I'd had more wild adventures with chicks. But I'm also maybe glad I didn't because it's, it's not me. It's, you know, it is me to a certain extent. Like, I think my dick gets hard just like everyone else. But, like, I don't know, man. Like, we were talking about the other day. I was always, like, I was always way more sensitive. Like, I was, like, I think if my first sex had gone better, I might be that guy. It was so bad that I was, like, 
I don't want to share this with anyone that I don't trust. Do you think anybody has a great first time? Like truly, like the music was right. Everything fit the way it was supposed to. People came at the same time. Nobody was screaming. <laughs> nobody was crying. Nobody's parents heard. Lasted longer than six seconds. Yeah, I don't yeah. think anybody had a great first time. Yeah. Like, do you I think did. like <laughs> J-Lo or Brad Pitt were like, <laughs> go ahead. The, uh, my first time, I was, 20, I was 21, right? And it was... <laughs> Guess what? It was a girl that I met at the bar at Applebee's. <laughs> oh, oh, no wonder you love Applebee's. So. <laughs> yeah, dude. Now we get it. Did you backflip for? No, I didn't do anything. She came on to me. Wow. Oh, I didn't wow. even know she was trying to have sex until she took her pants off. Oh. And at then, the Applebee's? White chick, white chick. White chick, yeah. I've only been with white chicks. For real? Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shout out to <laughs> shout keeping out. it pure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've never, yeah. I've never been with a black girl. I've made out with a black girl. I made out with a black girl. But I've never been like... Is that a big deal or no? Is that a big deal? Culturally. I mean, like culturally, are people like, you never been with a black girl? I mean, a lot of people do that to me, but I go, you got to realize where I grew up. Like, I mean, and all that, like, yeah, like, it's just all I can get. Right. You know? Black girls don't like John Mayer as much as I do. You know? And John Mayer's like my go-to for like love. Like, Whoa. I'm like, oh... You know, put that on. Yeah, that John Mayer's hearing this right now going, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah That's better than any good comment that's you'll get. great yeah. deal, yeah. Yeah. Dude. My first girlfriend ever. That's, yeah, that's how, I, that's how I got her. I was playing John Mayer in the car. Wow. Yeah. Did you play some on guitar talking. then too? What'd you say? On, on guitar then too? No, I can't, no, I can't yeah. play his songs on guitar. Yeah, his yeah. songs are a little tough for me to play. A little play. tricky, yeah. But a little, little tricky. But yeah, like, just set the mood. That's how I set the mood. I bet Floyd Gamble had a positive first time fucking. Oh yeah, a guy right. that I just hit rats out of a tree. Yeah. I would do a podcast to call it, just call it "Old Black Men," mm -hmm. and just listen to old black men tell stories. They're always so much better and richer. One thousand like, percent. It's just like I was. I had a joke I wrote. <clears throat> it's kind of a fucked up joke, but I was like, "You ever been hanging out with an old black man who's giving you knowledge, and then halfway realize, oh, you were just never cool enough to join a gang? <laughs> like if you were really a badass, you'd be dead." <laughs> You'd be a prisoner dead. Like, yeah, man. I hang Can I do that tonight? Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, let me try this out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, guys, I got this new one I'm working on. I'm just, all the <laughs> badass ones were in gangs and dead. They're in prison. I want to yeah. fucking talk to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just talking to the guy that was really good at math. <laughs> yeah. Who liked extracurricular activities? <laughs> he went to the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, yeah every time I <laughs> talked to He knew both his parents. <laughs> I want the one. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I talk to my biological father and like he'll tell me a story, I I like I never have any further questions. Cuz I'm like I don't want to know anymore. You know what I mean? But but a lot of this like, stuff it's like crazy shit that I'm like, yeah. Like when when you go for life advice and you're like everyone knows You think my you think my biological father is giving me life advice? <laughs> he's just he's he's more like Hey, you can do it. <laughs> you must be an anomaly to him. Like, just like how the fuck Th did Think about this. Up? When my dad was in, I was cheerleading. Think about it. Like, I was a competitive cheerleader. My dad's locked up for, for attempted murder. And I'm just out here cheerleading and skateboarding and playing guitar. And, like, my dad comes from, like, gang culture, selling drugs. God. You know what I mean? And meanwhile, like. He must have thought you were gay. <laughs> I mean, he had to. I, I, you know, I wonder. I wonder if he ever did. But he I, had but also to. like, I never gave a lot of people like that vibe. You know you what do, I mean? You I, do not have a gay vibe. Yeah, because I just like I did whatever the fuck I wanted. I didn't like, and also I, like like you said, I've always been like, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Like, no, if I don't want to do something, I, I won't fucking do it or whatever. And like, with with cheerleading, it was just like so different. I don't, I don't know. Like, it just t taught me like how to like learn about people in a way and. It was funny. I did Pauly Shore's podcast or whatever, and he had the, like the, there's these guys on there called the Old Gays or whatever that he had on, and uh, he goes he goes he was Pauly goes Chappelle was a cheerleader. You think he's had gay experiences? And they look they looked at him they looked at me and they go no, and he was like why you say that? And he was like he's so comfortable like in his skin and like the way he's he greeted us like no he like he couldn't have that like in his like I bet I bet there's also like there's a the theory. I apologize for this analogy, but this is the best thing I can think of when you say that. It's like, if you're a gay guy and you're going to take a chance, it's not with you. Like if, like, like a gay guy. You going to be ugly? No, 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 just no. You just, you're, you're masculine. <laughs> it's kidding. like if you had to go hunting in the jungle, you're not going to go like, let's see if I can catch a tiger first. <laughs> you're like, let's see what's fucking on the ground. Right. Squirrel. Yeah, so let's get squirrels. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh no, you say because like that's like because you're a man. Yeah, yeah. No, like, no. Like I've had gay dudes hit on me, and I go, oh no, nah, I ain't like that dog. But you have a good day. I yeah. just dap them up. Oh, I have gay guys hit on me, and I play into it. Are you playing into oh, it? I love it. I love it. I make them think I'm a little gay. And really? Then, yeah, and then I, I like, I love the compliment. Yeah. Was anybody almost successful? Like, did they compliment you so much? I had a dude like, back in my apartment. <laughs> the floor. He thought yours. he was close, huh? <laughs> yeah. He thought he was real close. He thought he was <laughs> real close. I was just curious. Like, I met him. I, I'd known him in college, and I met him at a bar, and he was like, uh, he was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gay. And I went, oh, cool. But it was like, I was 26, so I didn't really know any gay dudes. I didn't know any dude, gay dudes growing up. And I was like, wait, like, w and I had just started meeting gay guys like at work at, when I worked at Barnes and Noble. I was working the door with Boston Comedy Club and I, he was a cool dude. I'd known him in college and I was like, shut the fuck up. I was like, so wait, like, what's like, wh how fun is New York? He's like, it's fucking amazing. He goes, I am fucking every single night. We had a few beers and I was like, uh, what are you doing now? He was like, bars closing. He's like, I don't know what you want to do. I said, you want to go back and get a drink? And I'm certain my genuine energy he must have been like, yeah, we were about, get we're a about drink. to do this. We yeah. went back to our, my place. We were hanging out, drinking. I was just, I just wanted to hear about his gay adventures. Like, I was fascinated. And then my roommate, Ty Rodriguez, came home and his two dudes sitting on a couch barefoot. And he's like, <laughs> and I was like, Ty, he's gay. And Ty goes, no, I'm getting that vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wear your shoes, man. Yeah. Ty sat in between us. <laughs> he was like, uh, you guys want to have a drink? Are you guys going to keep doing coke? And Whoa. Yeah, but I was like, I, but I, I'm. I wonder if he, when he asked you, to, like when you asked him to like go back to the place and drink, I wonder if he was like, I could do Bert. I'm sorry. That was a sign. Yeah. <laughs> I was good looking then I too. I could do that. Yeah, yeah. Full head of hair. I looked good. It, it is interesting as a young straight guy, a couple of times that I hung out in gay bars with friends, you feel like a piece of meat and you, you realize like, oh my God, there's some women that feel like this every night they go out to a bar and nothing like Gay where you're doing slide. something against but, but it's like you gotta think we walked into their environment totally yeah you know I what was, I mean I wasn't, and like no, I wasn't, no 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 go ahead yeah I understood why it was happening and yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah. if anything I was flattered by it yeah. but it's just little things like people putting their hand on the small of your back you know <laughs> like where that's probably like I'm not threatening you but then you're like a lot of people have been putting their hand on the small of my back tonight you know without me knowing them or just the way someone says something to you where they're like I'm trying to fuck you I'm I'm like what you were saying where a guy's like hitting on you and they're like, it's cool, man. But then like, we're, it's dudes, we're not used to that happening 20 times yeah, a night, yeah, yeah. you know? And all of a sudden I'm like, women deal with this 20 times a so, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More than 20. More, yeah, more if than 20. Hot. Yeah, yeah, if you're a hot girl. You imagine everything's a fucking proposition. Yeah. No one just wants to hear your ideas. Yeah. They're not holding the door open for you to be chivalrous. <sighs> but see, yeah, and at the same time, and like, I'm, I'm like, I'm not that way to women. Like, yeah, I'm not exactly. like a hound dog. And that's because of like cheerleading. Yeah. Like, I see women as humans. You know what I mean? Like, really? That's yeah. big of you. That's yeah. big of you, dude. Yeah. No. It, well, you running for office? Uh, I know, right? Hey, vote for me. I'm yeah, yeah. No, uh, I, I no, like, with so it, many gay people. I started saying gay people. This is going to sound crazy. Yeah. I started seeing gay people like humans. And I can tell you the moment it happened. Because I didn't, I just thought they were just people who wanted to suck and fucking party. And I, and I lived with two gay women. And I just thought, this will be cool. I'll show up, be a bunch of chicks fighting in sports bras. I'll get in the middle. They'll suck my cock. And, oh, my God. And, like, I didn't, I didn't All know. All right, Bert. And then, <laughs> and then I moved in with them. And I remember the first, our first day, one of the gay chicks said, hey, does baby want eggs? And she goes, baby would love eggs. And I was like, oh, you're just like us. You're annoying as fucking shit. <laughs> I go, you make e you baby talk and you make eggs for each other? And I was like, I want eggs. And they're like, yeah, make your own eggs. And I was like, oh, you're just like my buddy yeah. Blair when he fell in love. <laughs> and he was like, does sweetie baby love eggs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's yeah. like, I would love eggs. Does baby want <laughs> cheese on their eggs? <laughs> I was like, ugh. Listen, th there are some beautiful women that I cheered with in my time that I fucking do not like. <laughs> like, I, like, like, I had homies that were like, yo, what about this girl right here? I'm like, I, I hate her. Yeah. So if I, I'm like, if I could just casually trip her on the regular, <laughs> just like, oh, shit, hey, sorry. <laughs> He just Sorry, said he sees women as humans, and now he's tripping. <laughs> yeah, just fucking. Yeah, pick a lane. Yeah, because I would trip my homie too. That I, yeah. that annoys me. You know, I would trip a dude that I don't like. Were people? Uh, was it like any other work environment where people were hooking up with each other? And what cheer? cheerleading? Yeah. Uh, you know, what? most of the women I have slept with ha has been because of cheerleading. You got. I was like the odd man out. Mm. You know, I was really good at it, and then also like you know, I, f I feel like I'm pretty handsome, and then you know, most of the dudes are gay. 
Wow. Like cheerleading is like fucking 90% gay. Yep. 95. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to go 99. <laughs> he stood out, yeah. 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 I was going to say 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Wow, man. There's... You know, like, and, and not that I, you know, and, but also I was like a lover boy. Sure. So anytime I like, like every one night stand that I've done, I've been like, yeah, so we. You fell in you, love. You know, you, are we going further? And they'd be like, oh, no, that was just it. I'm like, oh, really? All right. <laughs> Damn. And I just walk away. Damn. I would be so bummed. Because I thought, like, because I didn't know, because like I said, I had sex late. Sure. So I was like, oh, shit, like, we have sex, like, that means, love. We're, means we're in love. We're in love. Yeah. Is there one you one know? night stand you still think about sometimes? You're like, fuck, so what? what, what that, we... like, what? All of them. Why you bring that up, Adam? Because <laughs> you brought it up first. I was asking <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right, you're Wait, right. Have you had one night stands that you think back at? Sure. Yeah. But not not in terms of, like, what what I, what would that life? I don't think about like I wish yeah. I could change my life now, but just more of like, for sure. I mean, I the same way where uh, where there's definitely been people where I was like, and hang out the whole day after, maybe even you know, and night again too, and then yeah. be like, whoa, is it just gonna happen like that? Like this, I the connection just was yeah. crazy strong and like and easy to where, and then all of a sudden just done and you're yeah. like yeah. So yeah i guess in terms of like that sometimes like oh wow that was crazy how fast we hit it off and then just how fast that's, yeah. it shut off you know what i'm saying yeah yeah that it's like yeah it's that quick that's why like, i want a ring i see all you guys got your rings on my teacher i said the best one was probably uh yeah when i was what so it was my p teacher and i was fifth grade and uh what is going where are you I said, yeah. sorry, I was hoping you guys were going to just start laughing. Oh, no, 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 no. We were going to leave you. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is about to be yeah. good. Oh, it took us two yeah. hours to get here. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I was like, whoa. No, sorry, yeah. Was, yeah. Um, but there were some definitely, I, if I, I remember third grade was the first time I remember seeing a teacher being like, I don't know what my penis can do, but I think I want her to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember I invited Miss Robish, I was in third grade, to uh, my, um, uh, baseball game Did you fuck? and she brought dude she she brought her boyfriend and i remember being like i don't remember telling you there was a plus one for this fucking <laughs> and i was so bummed genuinely in the yeah. fucking third grade that she showed up with a guy and i was like who the fuck is that she's like oh he's my boyfriend kenny and i was like cool what's up man dude yeah. i love older women yeah that I teacher crush women. is real though that's why when you oh, hear yeah. about some of these stud 14 15 year olds like i mean you know Fuck. Wild. Dude, cheer moms. But what a crazy thing to be a teacher. And yeah. I What's bet. that? Me? Cheer moms? Oh, yeah, yeah dude. I think. But when I, back when I was, like, chiseled and, like, fucking wow, looking dude. good cheer in moms. my early 20s, fucking the only black dude around. Holy shit. Like, what's he like? Wow. I'm like, I'll tell you. When those cheer moms <laughs> were all, they, you they got were some all wild too. turkey, fam. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> they were cheerleaders themselves, right? Most of them probably. Uh, probably, maybe. I don't know. I didn't ask all that. But they were just so aggressive with me, too. They were like, meet me here right now. If you can't be here at this time, then we can't do it. I'm like, oh, okay. Wait, you fucked your moms? <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey. Don't tell anybody. I won't say a word. Yeah, this ain't going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I have, yeah. Wow. Awesome. I made out with a 23-year-old woman when I was 14. Really? Yeah, Look we, at us all just fucking... We were on yeah. the beach in New Smyrna, and you just sit on the I don't even know where that is. It's uh, just, just above Daytona or below Daytona right yeah. near Orlando. And we just sit on the beach hoping the girls would walk by. And these girls coming down the beach and we were like fucking excited. I was really, I was really like, I'm gregarious now, but like I was a goofball. And I was like, went up to them and I was like, I was like, hey, you guys want to hang out? And they started making fun of us. And then we're like, come on, we have beer. And they're like, you have beer? And we're like, yeah. And we went back and there was this little jetty, like not a jetty, but like a, a ramp. And we were beside the ramp. And they were over there, and they're like, "What are you guys even thinking that's going to happen tonight? You guys have beer? What?" And I was like, "I don't. I was hoping we make out with you guys." And she goes, "You wouldn't even know what to do if I made out with you." I said, "Try me." I was like ballsy, and this fucking twenty-three-year-old woman made out with me, and I to this day, yeah, go. That was the that was the kiss where I went. It's almost like going like, "Oh wait." There are other mountains other than this one. There's Everest out there. Like, this is, mm. could be fucking... And, man, I jerked off furiously that night to sure. that. I was like, that was the hottest kiss. 
And she grabbed me by the back. The girls didn't do that at 14. You just both went like this. And like, yeah, she grabbed me and she fucking, I remember, oh man. What if you still jerked off to that memory? Would that be weird? Because you, you'd be jerking off to 14 year old you. Is that weird? No. No. No, because you're thinking about the memory. Yeah. I think, I think sexually, I think all my, I mean, I, I, I don't think about any of my sexual encounters with chicks ever. Really? I'm trying to think. I think I can remember a couple blowjobs I got that were pretty monumental. I got one for you. When I was 17, <laughs> I hooked up with a service deli woman at Albertsons where I was bagging groceries. <laughs> she was 26, 27. Yeah. And, uh, and she came on strong and, and, uh, and she would always hook it up. We'd flirt all the time. We'd walk around bagging, you know, doing go backs, which was taking items that people just left out. Someone just takes pop tarts, and then they're at the check stand. They're like, you know what? I don't need these. Fucking be better, Daniel. And they put them back. Then Adam, fucking, we got twenty things of pop tarts. Go put them back. She walk around. Then you just kill time too. And then I go and yeah. flirt with her. And she would always hook it up. She'd be like, you want some max salad? You want potatoes? Whatever you want. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go on break. So how about what, what you got? What do you? How's that potato salad looking today? I mean, we were fucking. And so then we hooked up, and uh, and then she wanted to date. And I was like, you're 27, 20, I'm 17. Like, yeah. I'm just in high school. There's just hard no. Yeah. And uh, Oh, the fact that you understood that at that age. Well, it was wild. I don't know. It just seemed crazy. I was like, yeah. oh, I thought just some hand jobs in the parking lot after work was, was pretty cool. And and uh, <laughs> and then I remember the day when I was like told her, it was maybe three days after when we worked the same shift and I walked walked back up and thought everything was still hunky-dory. And I was like, How's that, uh, how's that Max Out feeling today? And she's like, it's going to be a minute. And I was like, and I remember one of this guy, Jared Yarnish, was like, you just jerked yourself out of free potatoes. <laughs> wow. He's like, that backfired. Yeah, it was a bummer. But so, just such a crazy thing that she was like, so shell-shocked that I didn't, I was like, I'm in high school. You're a full-grown, 10 years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have the same hobbies. Yeah, yeah. 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 Dude, I was 26, and I was at the Viper Room seeing Eagles of Death Metal. And this 50-something-year-old lady gave me a handy while they were on stage playing, like, and we're front row. And meanwhile... These are some great hand jobs, yeah, by yeah. the way. They're all in public, too. We're bringing the hand Bro, job back, Her husband is on the other side of her, enjoying the concert. Whoa, you were how old? 26. It was my 26th birthday. I was at the Viper Room. Did she know it was your birthday? No, she didn't. Wow. That would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> If like in that subtle interaction. Is it your birthday? Yeah. <laughs> it's today a special day. It's my birthday. Oh, well, let me slow down. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Magical night. I got a hand job on Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Really? Yeah. Damn. Wild. Who so are that we? Same girl did it on the plane too. On the plane? Yeah. Oh yeah. No way. Man, yeah, we hooked up in dressing rooms at like a mall, like in the, you know, if we're in the gap, go change, you know, wild. On the plane? Yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean was crazier. There were children around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot they were, of cameras too, by the way. that dark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> The pl- yeah, I'm now actually thinking the, of that. The, those those like, <laughs> I, but I have kids. I've recently been on Pirates oh. of the Caribbean. It's not a very, it's we, it's fairly well We were lit. in the way back. We weren't it's in the fucking front. Really. I mean, everyone's looking the same direction. The I can't remember time. that. I can't remember the ride. Yeah. We were in the way back. If we were in the front, it would, yeah, it would be obvious. In the front, <laughs> you that guy's having a stroke. <laughs> yeah. Trying to, try to concentrate while the tour guide's giving puns up there. Oh, no, yeah. That is but, fucking wild. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, the plane is the plane is the craziest thing to me. The plane was crazier for sure because there was somebody else in the row. You know. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, it was. I was in. Was, was it at nighttime? I was in. I was in middle. Person was to my left, and she was to the window. Was it nighttime? Yeah, it was forty-two degrees out. I don't fucking remember what day and time it was. <laughs> they just took me a diet sprite. Oh, thanks for asking, Chappelle. That really fills the story out. Jesus Christ, her were, name was Gladys. Were you in the window? It was her seat? third year on Delta. <laughs> She was in the window, so I just had to turn oh, wow. kind of in the middle. You know, I haven't even jerked myself off on a plane. <laughs> yeah, and that's more discreet. Yeah, it was, and it was exciting. I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, it was new into the relationship, so it was just like hornball city that's on both crazy. fronts. To be able to think, to not to think like, you know, yeah, I guess it was uh, nerve wracking enough to make it. Hey, your hand just, jobs are underrated. Was yeah. that hand jobs are underrated? Well, oh, the yeah. people that go into the bathroom of the planes to to bang it out is wild. That's the scary. But, yeah, that's scary. I'm like, how? How I could you? There. Yeah. And people know too. Um, they have to know. I definitely feel like I've been on planes where I've seen it happen. Where I've just like, like you're saying, like just notice the the way that the people get up. 
and go at, or whatever. Um, there was a flight attendant I met once that told me that she was friends with a flight attendant that used to go into the uh, cockpit and, uh, and like just, you know, because they're on cruise control and just bang the pilot mid flight. And I was like, what airline and how do I not fly that anymore? I mean, just uh, like. I wonder how many pilots have done that. Probably way more than we think. Right? A thousand percent. You know, when they put that drink card up and they're, I mean, who knows? You're not also looking. Yeah. People are so in their own world on the I plane. I wonder if I could have. There's been a couple times where I've been. Spirit, probably everyone's I've been fingering friends each other. friends with flight attendants. <laughs> and like, I've, I've been hit on on planes more than anywhere. I got, I got hit on a plane. This is the best one. I got hit on a plane. I was flying back from New York to LA. I was sitting next to a fucking bombshell. I was, I was probably, I just had kids. So I was probably 34, 36. She had to be like 46. She was so fucking hot. And we were like vibing, but I was vibing in the same way that I brought that gay back guy back to my room. I was just having fun. And then she was like, she was like, uh, I like you. We should uh, hook up. You, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm married. She was like, oh. But, and I was like, oh, no, no, I'm like, I don't cheat on my wife. Like, I'm married. She goes, oh, I'm just looking for sex. And I said, okay. I said, like, I might have a good guy for you. And she was like, what? And I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, she was, I just want to get fucked. That's it. I'm coming out of a relationship. She had just, she was coming back from Tibet. And she was like, I'm, I'm trying to figure things out, but I need to get fucked. I was like, I, I got a good hookup. And we got off the plane and I called. I said, hey, there's a girl that just wants to fuck tonight. He's was, like, is she from Tibet? He was like, yeah. <laughs> First of all, isn't Tibet where you go to find that fucking, find yourself? No. Yeah, don't find dick in Tibet. No, well, she was like, really trying to figure it. things out. Yeah, she her was life. figuring herself out and she was coming back wanting to get fucked. Met up that night. They went to the, <laughs> met up at the store. Had a t one shot of tequila each. Went back to her place. Had sex. Called me on the ride home. He was like, you are a fucking legend. Wow, dude. Yeah. I've gotten I've gotten hit on by a lot of chicks on planes, but I also like to talk, and I'm friendly, yeah. and I like drinking, and so like, there was one flight attendant. You're available for the bond, is what you're yeah. saying. There's one flight attendant where I was like, oh, I think I th I sincerely think I could have sex with her in this plane. Dude, she was so <laughs> over the top, and I remember thinking. Like well, she does the safety announcements. She just kept coming back to me every fucking five you minutes. Just tell, wow, well, yeah. yeah. Every five minutes. Was Touch like, the arm when she says something to you. Yeah. No, uh, uh, squat down and hold on to my arm on the ar arm thing. Yeah. yeah. Squat down and hold on. Yeah, like just hold my arm and talk and it got me fucking wasted. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I just but saw. I just, uh, yeah. yeah. Shouts out flight attendants. No, but I just, I can't imagine letting her down. Like, I can't imagine, like, all the expectations she'd have to watch me take her in there and yeah. have this wild fantasy of having sex in an airplane come true and me come in literally before it's out of my pants <laughs> and her be like, what the fuck was that? And yeah. I'm like, "I'm that's how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my wife would have been a lot more appreciative. <laughs> she would have been like, thank you. I'm glad I didn't have to take my pants off. <laughs> got the experience still. Yeah. You got the story. Yeah, I think anyone who's ever flirted with me or hit on me in the past 20 years was not doing so because they thought I would be a good lover. It's because they like my dad energy and I'm like a safe man. You know, I had a woman who was like eight months pregnant hit on me after a show one time. And I was just like, did you not just hear me talk for an hour about how I'm happily married? Yeah. And, and I saw her in eyes like, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, why a lot of that's the shit that's crazy like, to me. Yeah. A lot of comics do that as a front. What they do you mean? Do that, like talk about their family and stuff oh, yeah. and talk about being married and being a good guy. And then their dogs. I've yeah. seen it. And you just are like, you're like, and, and so I would have people come up to me. They're like, the marriage stuff, is that real? And you're like, yeah. You think that I'm, that, you think that's, I'm going to make up that I have kids? Yeah. <laughs> it is funny. Yeah. They, when I used to talk about playing Wolverine at Universal Studios, because which I did for five years, people go, that's fake, right? I go, what a funny thing for me to make up yeah. that I did. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, think about it. Every time I talk about cheerleading. What song is this? This is what you were playing. This is, no, no, I'm going to play this for you and we get back to the car, the bus. This is one of the best songs in the world. I know the song. Who's, who is this? Wilka. Red Eye. He's a solo guy? No, no he does man. do solo stuff, but he's got a band. Oh, he's Wilka. got a band. Yeah, he's pretty fucking awesome. That's, yeah, I, th that's I your thought he was one of those, uh, like, solo guys that, like, um, I can't think of any solo guys right now. Beck. Beck. <laughs> Mark That's McGrath. Mark Wait, McGrath. 
it's six o'clock. We have to work out. We have a show. We have to figure out if we're drinking tonight. What time's everyone leaving? What is everyone going to the airport with us tomorrow? I gotta leave whenever the crew bus leaves tonight. Really? Yeah, we're together. Are you going to Tampa? No, I'm not going to Tampa. Okay. Where are you going tonight? Hey, uh I think I'm in a yeah, hotel and I get Philly tomorrow. They fly okay. early. Yeah. What time what time's what time's bus call? You gonna you, you guys are gonna drink tonight? I don't know that I just heard that song. <laughs> I mean we did we almost didn't play a little blackjack and we did uh, not end up being. Wait, what really time's the show? We lost a thousand dollars. I would you oh, have really? that up. <laughs> oh, the show's in an hour? Yeah, the show's in an yeah. hour. Oh. Yeah, we gotta yeah, we, we haven't go. eaten, we haven't worked yeah. out. There's yeah. so much shit to do. I'm on that lightheaded hungry right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel oh, yeah. I feel fasted. I should weigh myself now. I know. Took yeah, I'm starving shit. right now. Right? They have crab cakes and catering. Catering next door, but wow. And then uh, I would love, I would love Guinness tonight. I would love an Irish bar. I'd love tonight. an Irish bar. I'd do that. I would love an Irish bar. Yeah, I'd be around that. I would love an Irish bar. Yep. Celebrating St. Patty's Day. I know people in LA do going to Rock and Riley's Day. My wife's going to doing a little run of some of the really cool spots around town, and I'm a little jealous. What's what's uh what's what time's our flight tomorrow, Pete? Oh fuck yeah, gentlemen. Let's do this. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> yeah. We'll maybe go take a look at catering. Do we get a workout from Nomi? We got a workout from Nomi. We bang out a workout at 6.30. Fucking crush it up to 7. Shower. Show. Guinness on stage. Wheels up after the show to an Irish bar. Find us an Irish bar that can accommodate us. Yeah. And we'll fucking have some pints. Thanks for an hour or two. Yeah. Chappelle bang out a backflip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I retired the, the backflip a long time ago. <laughs> Shane Gillis was like, you gotta stop doing that. <laughs> He's like, you're gonna fall. <laughs> yeah. You know fall. Shane Gillis can do a backflip? No, he can't. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I was like, shut the fuck up. I was like, he would have. that would have been the first thing he told me. <laughs> oh, shit. That's funny. We, we, we texted each other. I hate that he bullied me out of my backflip, by the way. <laughs> we texted each other yesterday morning. And uh, whoever we had hung out with the night before were saying kind things about each other. And we randomly, at the same time, texted, you know, you're dot, dot, hung out with a boy, spoke really kindly of you, it loves you, I hope you're having a great day. And then he replied, hung out with dot, 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 he fucking loves you, dot. And then Shane goes, why don't we do this more often? Because <laughs> like, everyone wakes up with anxiety. Yeah. Like, or maybe I texted that to Shane. I go, why don't we do this more yeah, often? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. now we're in a great fucking mood. Yeah. We're like, yeah, that's how you start the day. And then I went through my list of everyone that like was talked positive about and texted them. Say just great things. Awesome. Yeah. And Goes then, a long way. Did you guys yeah. get a text? That's weird. You guys mm -hmm. were with me. <laughs> you were with me. <laughs> you, you guys, with anybody? Me. I have footage of the night I can show you. <laughs> <laughs> I, did not get it. I got zero texts. I got zero texts. Uh, <laughs> probably won't for a while. <laughs> well, gentlemen, all I'll say is this is a fantastic. Yeah, this was great. Thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for. Yeah. yeah, this means a lot. Thanks for hosting the memories. It was yeah. a great, 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 great weekend. All Let's right. start our day. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Bert. Thanks, Bert. <laughs>